just before the ads um, about. Uh, I think we're talking about objects being stuck up people's arses. I, I think so, that, that, was the, that was the that was the link. Can just wasn't confirm it? that it was. Uh, it, w it was. It was uh, object. Uh, ob <laughs> objet da RC. Oh, yeah. Well, objet das. RCS. Yes. Objet das. Yeah. Objet das. Which uh, maybe that's a new feature. Objet das. Objet das. I'm using objects you've stuck up your French brain. for stuff. Stuffing <laughs> stuff up your ass. Yeah. But I remember when I. It's not really. It was just about objects <clears> and odd things in odd places. I um, used to work for a magazine when I lived in Bristol, and uh, I remember the editor said to me once. He said, "Oh, we got a page to. We got half a page to fill. Do do the usual. Phone up a hotel and ask them what the weirdest objects they've ever found left behind in a." hotel room are. This was something they did every year, they just did a, they would phone up the local hotel. And I found out, I can only remember two of them, but they have stuck in my mind. These were found, I think it was the uh, Marriott Hotel in Bristol, yeah. they were found by cleaners. Um, a chicken. A, a live a chicken? Hotel, yeah, a live chicken in a hotel room. And that was just left behind. And, um, a false leg. I mean, I don't know who Lou, I don't know who leaves behind a false leg. I mean, presumably you'd notice if you didn't have your false leg, because you'd be lying on the floor. But, um, but I just remember, well, yeah, I don't know where else you'd find those two objects, except perhaps Paul McCartney's farm. <laughs> <laughs> but I've always Mate, thought, I've always thought Mate, myself, who left behind a false leg? <laughs> Maybe the chicken pecked it off. Yeah, and well, possibly. the person with it just like went and goes, so much different, I keep falling over. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. don't know why, and where's my chicken? Yeah. She probably called later and said, uh, did the cleaners find a uh, chicken and a false leg? I'll check. <laughs> yeah. We ha oh, have a lo we haven't hand had them handed in. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We've got a we got a lot of chickens and false legs left yeah. behind. Yeah. What was it like? Yeah. It was just a wooden thing with a with a foot. Has it got a foot on the end? Well, yeah. Yeah, we might have found it. It Do might you be yours. In pirate films, they always had the pirates would have the peg leg, which was just a piece of wood. There was no effort to make it look like yeah. a leg. I don't know why it didn't dawn on them then to make it look more like a leg. I mean, I don't know at what point. I'd like to quite. I quite like a big. I, do you know I why? I wouldn't really be that interested, but I'd be marginally interested to see the history of It was fashion, leg. because they didn't wear long trousers then, so they all stopped at the knee. So, right. why, why, why are you wearing long trousers? <laughs> right. No reason. Let's have a look at your legs. Yeah. Oh, it's more embarrassing, you see, if yeah. you hide it. Yeah. It's like they had a hook. Yeah. Why, why don't they have a glove? A hook is never a glove. It's not a practical enough thing. It a is hook. if you're abseiling between two buildings <laughs> in a hurry, because then you can just use it straight down the wire. But a hook, I mean, a hook is such a grotesque thing. I mean, you, because we right, don't have a gun. <laughs> but I mean, there's no one except that weird guy who, who's up in North London who's still got a hook for a hand. Well, I, I, I think it's it is useful. Practical it's good, well, no, it's good for carry carrying bags. Yeah, shopping, carrying shopping. Do you think that's the, that was the concern of pirates? Well, that, them Tesco. I, well, it's, I mean, they didn't have like animatronic sort of stuff then, did they? I know, but it's just so. I mean, you know, if it's just not very flattering, is it? A hook. I mean, you know. James was at school with a kid who had lots of different things, like knife, fork, he could screw onto the end of it. That's brilliant. That, that is brilliant. <laughs> That's good. That's almost as good as having a hand. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. For, 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 for the canteen. But at school, you'd be the coolest kid in school, surely. Mm, bit more frightening in the swimming pool. I or in a bouncy you... castle. Yeah. But yeah, for, for chopping up a bit of- <laughs> for chopping up a bit I of I imagine pork. him being banned from the bouncy castle <laughs> at the fate. You can't let him on. Oi, hooky, get on. You're not welcome on here. <laughs> like to apologise for some of the things said in today's show. But what happened when he started asking girls out and stuff? Well, I imagine he spent a lot of time with his hands behind his back. Oh God, with a sore spot on him one, <laughs> probably, that's and so uh, and I can get it out with this one. Yeah, <laughs> don't say that's handy. There's a fella in Ward Two yeah. that's got a shopping we bag up his ass. Together. Just pop it up there, pull it out, shopping intact, done. Anyway. Uh, Hastings for Rockbusters. He's going to Hastings in ten minutes, isn't ya? Can't wait. Can't He's wait. looking forward to it. Lovely day. Lovely town. Nice little trip. Chill out. Come back refreshed. Monday. Ah, let's do some work. <laughs> Ooh, you'll what, sleep tonight. What does the boss want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> He's done you there, Carl. I was letting it lie, and he comes back with that after we were getting on. So, who's the winner? Answers. <laughs> well, let's give us, give us the answers first. <laughs> Right, well, this was, uh, this is how it sounded. No, it's not rock, so I'm calling it rock, but it's because no I, I, no I, no they're all interchangeable at the moment. No right, Paul McCartney, Cheeky Girls, Sugar Babes, Space and Beatles. Okay. Right? Brilliant. You've really, I mean, if you're not interested in it, Carl, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, mate. Um, anyway, we're going to give the uh, prizes, which are pretty good this week, to uh, James Waters from Colchester. Well done, Jamie's got them pretty much right. Where's Dickie Anderson? Not heard from Dickie Anders for a long, long because time. Because I wanted to, uh, uh, if there's one show I'd want him to hear, it's this one. Because mm. we've pulled out some of the stops now, haven't we? He's yeah. excited because he's going away, so he's putting an extra bit of, ah, uh, 
Come on, let's play a record. Let's play a tune, then let's come back with monkey news. Can we have some monkey news oh, to end with? Oh, yeah, oh, he's oh, excited. oh, 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 placebo in this picture on XFM 104.9. Eight minutes to go, let's make it a good eight minutes, and then we can all chill out. Yeah, enjoy the rest <laughs> of the weekend. Play the jingle. Uh, oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. A particularly aggressive jingle this week. Wow. Yeah, looking forward to this monkey news. <laughs> Carl. Right. Come on. So, what's the name? What? We've done- <laughs> Sorry, what, what? 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 Brilliant. We've done, uh, we've done a lot of monkeys who, like, got involved in crime and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? We had, uh, the one on the train station. Yeah. Nick in a bag. Yeah. We had the one who went Don't into a bank. One. Who cares? Went into a bank. <laughs> and walked out with the money and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Right? Didn't happen either. Next. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is, you never sort of found out what happened to them. If they sort of got worse, got more involved into oh, crime. Oh, this monkey news update. <laughs> that would uh, be amazing. Brilliant. What they found out in India is, yeah, it's got a prison. It's okay. just for monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you mean wild animals? You mean a they, zoo? Yeah, yeah, a zoo or a kennel or no. something that where they've they've they has been uh, gone mental or no, something. No, it's a prison. It's yeah, a prison. Is, it, is it? Does it have fraud cases? It's got- it's I, 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 mainly- mainly sort of animals that are attacked things, and it's mainly violence, I bet. That's my- That and- uh, that and theft. Say it again? Theft. <laughs> Say it again? Theft. Say it again? Robin. Uh, no, let's go back to the, the, the- that word. We're gonna keep doing it. You've got- we've got Robin. six minutes. You're gonna say the word right before you go to Hastings. Well, do you say it? No, well, you no, say then it, you'll know how to say it. Well, alright, Robin then. It's been caught Robin. Say it again though. So Who's anyway. Robin? Who's Robin? So, uh, they've got this prison, <laughs> right. This is extraordinary. <laughs> say it again. No, you're not gonna say it? No, go on then. So they got a prison for them, right? And, uh, there's eleven of them in there, eleven monkeys. Right. That are in there for life. <laughs> Cause that's- the, 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 I think there's one just got out on parole. Right. No right. time off. There's eleven. There's eleven. I'll give you the bit of paper because I thought this was. <laughs> weird. Now, you, th th you thought it was a bit weird. Now, Carl, what uh, what are they in there for then? Because I mean, they're in there for life, so I'm assuming Robin, it's murder, Robin, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Premeditated murder. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. They're not crime bosses, are they? They're not. Are they? Are they the prostitution uh, and gambling? Are you sure they're not the, just the pawns and the and the head sort of like orangutans up a tree going? Remember, you don't know me. You're on your own. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I go down, you're all yeah. coming with me. You take some of your gorillas down there and sort him out. Oh, the great banana robbery. <laughs> it's I not. If, I wonder if they'd get them. Right, go on then. Okay, let me see. Now, where, I don't know what source this is, as ever. <laughs> is it just as ever the back of a fag packet found in the toilet? Well, no, I mean, someone's clearly- if, if this is nonsense, then someone's clearly gone to a lot of effort because it does open with the headline, Parole unlikely for inmates of monkey prison. <laughs> yeah! Officials say 11 inmates at India's only monkey jail. Officials? Now what kind of people <laughs> work at a monkey jail? <laughs> Where do you work? Uh, um, uh, it says officials say 11 inmates at India's only monkey jail are unlikely to ever be released. Uh, the prison in Patilia houses monkeys apprehended by game wardens in Punjab state for thieving and attacking people. Uh, the, Daily, uh, the Daily Telegraph reports how the monkeys at the prison in Montebello blah, 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 snarl and glare at visitors from their heavily barred cages. Two monkeys were released a year ago after exhibiting good behaviour for 18 months in the jail. They have remained out of trouble. Prison can work, that's good. So, so All basically 11 monkeys, they were aggressive wild animals that were taken away from the public for their own good. I'm robbing them up. <laughs> <laughs> Wildlife officials believe part of the problem has been caused by thieves training monkeys to help them. Lorry drivers training monkeys as guards for vehicles and itinerant entertainers oh, using ill-treated so monkeys as and part it's of the, it's the monkey that takes the rap. It's a shame, that, isn't that it? That is awful. They didn't know what they were doing, did they? Oh, well, there you go. What do you think of that though, Carl? What would you- what would, if you- if you could visit them, like Lord Longford or something, what would you- what would you say to them? You go there and they, you, they, you get a visit a week or something. You know. So can you get us a video? Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Do they get, uh, conjugal rights? Do you reckon? You wouldn't be interested in that though, would you? What's- would they get what? <laughs> would you be happy to give them their conjugal rights? Yeah, would you? Fair enough. Alright. Off to Hastings. <laughs> Off you See go. You later.
Tom put in the Heartbreakers breakdown, and that's um, for Carl's behaviour last week. Carl, you seem to be a little bit happier. Last week, I mean, we were worried about you. Were you sort of slipped into some sort of like weird depression? You played placebo twice, so you weren't concentrating. I know you're going to say that um, me and Steve were annoying you, but you know that's easy excuse. I mean, I think the listener can make up their own mind. No, so no, no. it's just like, like I say, though, it's like a murderer. Right? He might not have done that if it was a different day, if the sun was out or whatever. And everything just happened at once that wound me up. Right. right. So it was, it was like a crime of passion. You, you'd be let off because those, those sort of circum- you, you'd never put yourself, say, in a position again where you'd, we'd have two people trying to wind you up <laughs> for, you know, the sake of fun and laughter for the public on a tin pot radio station between one and three every Saturday. Yeah, but- You'd never do that again, would you? Last week it wasn't just for the listeners, it was for you as well between twelve and one. Because we were even on the air. <laughs> <laughs> you were winding me up then, do you know what I mean? Having a discussion. It's alright. I'm, I'm used to it now, I'm used to it, I'm used to it, so it doesn't yeah. matter. But so I found right. out that I can't do this job anymore, I can't do these sort of jobs where you've got to be happy all the time. Well you don't have to be happy all the time. No, you, d you do, you really. Forget that. You forget that for the- yeah, but I can't. Do you know what I mean? I've got things going on in my head. And <laughs> do, you do you think when Bobby Davros had a bad day that he doesn't go on stage and give 100%? No, but that's- that Do you think Les Dennis let all that stuff get in his way when he did that theatre tour to a, the, the people he in had, front- he, in Sometimes the, he had audiences of like seven, eight, 15 people. Yeah. And he, he just went, it's there. It's not my private life. Forget that. Bang. Yeah, but good okay? on him. Yeah. He, he can do that. But what I'm yeah. saying is I can't- He's a professional. So I was talking to Suzanne about it because you know it, it did get me down last Suzanne week. Suzanne's your therapist. <laughs> <laughs> so saying, a minder. Uh, yeah. Saying yeah. to her, you know, I can't, I can't do this sort of job. Normally, what I do in the week, you know, I'm tucked away in a studio. If I'm annoyed, no one knows about it. I get my head down. I get on with it. I do. You tell him. Go on. Next. You know what I mean? Next. Next. Right, what, what, yeah, but sorry. So, but what's your point here? So every Saturday, you've got to come here. You've got, you've got to, to be happy. We've got to go. Oh, Carl, are you all right? Oh, you're yeah, right. Your hair looks nice. No, no, but you know what I mean. <laughs> That's the first time in it. Normally, people listening go, "He's a happy fella." Do you know what I mean? They so never think you're a happy fella, Carl. Well. They've never heard you laugh. <laughs> no one has ever. I oh, seriously, we get emails all the time. No one's ever heard you laugh. Yeah, They've never I, heard I, you I, laugh. I'm still happy. You don't have to. Well, are you? Yeah. You don't look happy. But anyway, that's that's the problem with this job, and um, I was thinking about it. If if <laughs> do you know like if you're a doctor? Sure. And. You're on a plane and something happens. Yeah. Yeah. Even though you're on holiday. <laughs> yeah. You might have to save someone's life just because yeah. you can. Next. Yeah. And I'd be thinking, I'll keep quiet. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. See, that's one of the reasons why you didn't actually qualify. <laughs> as, a, as a surgeon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as, yeah. I mean, you can still do your consultancy stuff. <laughs> oh, sure. But yeah. you know, you just don't actually yeah. want a knife in your hand anymore. <laughs> Brilliant. So you're giving this up, are you? So yeah. how, is, how is a doctor on a plane comparable to this? Because that is just the same situation, do you know what I mean? He's yeah, probably got his head, he's, he's, he's shut, shut off, he's yeah. ready for his holiday. He's going to Hastings for a night. Someone, you know, has a little bit of tummy trouble or heart attack or whatever. Yeah. And is he a doctor on the plane and he's like, oh, Jesus, yeah, he's going on holiday. It. Do you know what I mean? I've got, I've got, a, I've got a loose in his tie. <laughs> yeah. I can't do But what I don't understand, Carl, is you get paid to do this. It's not like we're forced, it's not like it's your holiday. You, you know that this is your job of work. This is paying for your new kitchen. Exactly. Yeah, but I've got the kitchen now. Oh. It's done, isn't it? Right. Yeah. So, so job, when you when you stopping? When you quitting? Well, you're you're finishing, aren't you, in a couple of weeks for a bit? No, so. about four. four yeah, weeks. yeah, about we're finishing four on the sixteenth of August. Yeah, but we, you know we're only going away for like six or seven weeks again, aren't we? Well, you don't know, yeah, do you? Well, we'll give up if you give up. Tell you tell your managing directors that. Well, that's that's a bit annoying. Why? Because you've just passed the book, haven't you? I haven't passed the buck, which is this three way, you know, you get your, you get your name in heat, you're in the title now. It's Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant and Carl Filkington, and now you want to go, I don't want to do it anymore. Well, Carl, think about you, it. Think about it. I don't know whether it. you've noticed, but we don't provide anything on this show. <laughs> so if you leave, we have to go. <laughs> Right, let's put a song on. No, just think, <laughs> don't be so <laughs> selfish. Don't be so selfish. Yeah. We need you, yeah. we've got yeah. nothing. Think of the control. Molly's Chambers, Kings of Leon. Brilliant. On XFM 104.9. So, I'm not going to put pressure on you, Carl. I know you're scared to be saying this, right? But, um, I'll tell you what we do, right? We're, uh, we're stopping this show on the 16th of August. We're, we're going to film the, the Office specials, okay? 
and we'd be coming back, I don't know, uh, August, September, um, mid-October, mm -hmm. if Carl does. Yeah. No, I know that's pressure, but that's it. I think it is it. I think this is a three-way show. So you don't have to do it. We, uh, what should we do? Because we've- I know we've been approached by a couple of others. What would well, you we do? Well, we've been approached by, uh, obviously, better radio stations. <laughs> um, I mean, just think of- I mean, if you're a listener, just think of any of the radio stations you prefer to listen to. That's some of the ones that have offered us gigs. <laughs> um, so we could toy with those. Or we stay and we see this through and we get XFM on the map. We get a few stones oh, I know, year. Rick, I know you've <laughs> had a passion since you started working at XFM to get the listeners into double figures. <laughs> I know that's what have been one of your ambitions, and I think it'll be a shame to give up so soon, because you've done so yeah, much hard work. Yeah. Um, so, uh, we, that's what we need to think about. I think you, so we've got, what, we, so we've got four weeks left, and that might be four weeks forever, and never coming back, yeah. or four weeks for like an eight week for, and that's for you to think about. So, think if you enjoy the next four weeks, Carl. Yeah, but like I said to you though, hmm? the reason I did this, yeah. was to get that kitchen, right? Now, Brilliant. as we speak now, right? Builders in the flat. He's been annoying me. <laughs> of course he has. Of course he has. What's he been doing? Uh, well, when he when he turned up on uh, on Monday, right? Yeah. Wanders in, and the first thing he says to me is, uh, "Said the pub across the road is it any good?" <laughs> I said, "Well, it doesn't matter, does it? You're working on the kitchen." Think of saying that to a builder. Probably making conversation. Probably meant, do they do a, a, a toasted sandwich? Because I got a half hour lunch break, not an hour, like Carl Bilkington. Mm, mm. So uh, I'll pop in there and get a nice, you know, cheese and tomato sandwich. Is that like genuinely what you said to him? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah said so to him. Su Suzanne had a go at me saying, why have you said that? He hasn't even started on it yet. I cannot believe that. that. You're unbelievable, Carl. And you say it's us that are rude, crass, I wasn't being rude. I just was, I just was letting him know. Do you know what I mean? I know what He knows what he was there for. He had it down on his little docket, do the kitchen this week. <laughs> yeah. He didn't come down and go, what the f- what did I come out for? Was it to go to the pub for a week? Why am I mm. wearing these overalls? Yeah! Who's the little bald mate twat insulting me? <laughs> Let me just check. Let me call the head office. I wasn't having a go though. I mean, they should have finished it yesterday. And yeah. they're there now. Right? Yeah. On their own. And what annoyed me is they turned up late today. Hold on, Carl, I've just realised something. They're probably listening to the radio. This, I assume, tuned to XFM, isn't it, in your kitchen? Yeah, but- they don't know it's me, do they? You know what I mean? No. They'd go, he's got a whiny mank voice as well, so's the bloke who owns this place. And the bloke who owns this place, when I said, what's that pub like across the road, said, well, you won't be bothering that, he's working on no, this. No, he, he won't be able to put two and two together, will he? You suddenly, the penny's dropped, doesn't it? You've suddenly realised, look at his face! Yeah. He's suddenly realised they might know it's him! And they could be listening, and they're gonna clean you out, mate. Oh, if you are the builder working in, uh, where is it? I won't say the address, but it's central London, isn't yeah. it? Go yeah, go mental. Have whatever you want. Opposite Seriously. that, opposite that pub that yeah. you like, that you're. That yeah, you're he'll probably be in there now, so he won't be. Listening. Oh, insulting! You know insulting I mean? a British insult. workman. He should so have been today. Mental. He should have been at, at eight this morning. Just which go me anyway. mental. Why I don't, I really don't understand why they've got to start so early, right? Yeah. But he said he'll be there for eight. Turn up at half nine, yeah. right? Wanders in, and what annoys me is. He could have left all this downstairs. He had a paper under his arm, yeah. one of those crossword books, yeah. and a pot noodle. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not being funny, but most of them took quite a bit of time. A crossword yeah. book, he's not happy with just the one that's in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, if you are the builder that's listening now, doing Carl's flat, what about pissing in the laundry basket? <laughs> Lonesome Day, Bruce Springsteen, on XFM 104.9. So, you've realised now that the builder could well be listening, knowing exactly who you're talking about. If it, there's, a, there's a chance of it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. If, I didn't think about it, but you're right, you know, was tuned on to that. I think he did flick it on, thinking about it, thinking back. If so, yeah, it's, it's probably, it's probably listening now? No, he probably isn't. He probably listened to about half hour and if he's got any sense he turned it to heart or virgin or magic or something, but, you know, there is a chance. Good advice to the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you've got any yeah. sense. If you finish yeah. the crossword puzzle. I, th I think, you know, according to our figures, there's a 5% chance of him listening to it. Yeah. So, uh, if we, you know, if we want to be accurate. <laughs> Although well, he's in a house with it tuned to that, so I think it puts him right up to 50% yeah. straight but then away. then again, Rick, he's got a job of work, so yeah. why would he be listening to this show? Well, he's doing a crossword at the moment. Yeah, well. You, be you better hope he's not listening. 
Well, I mean, they do annoy me. I'll, I'm sticking, I'm sticking by it. Yeah, anyway, come on, come on, you might as well keep digging. Yeah, go on. No, I'm just saying they, they do annoy me the way they, they wake you up at eight and then. Well, that's when they start work. Because I told you, I, I mean. Oh, we'll leave that one then. Yeah. No, but it's like the other day when when they came in. I always like to test them. Do you know what I mean? When I had some work <laughs> done on the last flat that was in, right? That was renting. The builders were in sorting in the shower out and that. They woke me up about half past seven. Yeah. Right. Were you in the shower? No, no, I, Good I, thing I, about I, cleaning this shower, there's never any hair down the plug hole. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, I I left early to come to work, right? Sure. Um, and I <laughs> thought, I wonder what they're doing. I wonder if they have started. So I walked back to go back in. They'd left the flat and they was outside having a Starbucks. <laughs> and it just annoys me that they couldn't do that first. Do you know what I mean? Have your breakfast first, then come and wake me up. But don't wake me up to then get me out of the flat and then say, right, let's go and have breakfast. Well, they've probably got to get in, haven't they? Didn't what they? for? What for? They can put all the tools in the in the little lobby bit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just winds me up. Sure. Now the thing is, the guy today who's doing the tiling, well, that's narrowed it down a bit more. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> when I knew he was in there, I went out for a bit, had a cup of tea and a bacon butty, yeah. right, at a cafe, and I went back and I, kept, I was really quiet. Put my key in the door and opened it really quick to see what he'd be doing, and he had actually started you... work. So fair play to him. What if he'd just been exfoliating himself naked on the kitchen floor? Yeah. I'd say, right, caught you. <laughs> Don't this use my exfoliate, yeah. yeah. So, uh. Yeah, well, if you're listening, go through, go through the wardrobe upstairs. Go through the wardrobe, get stuff some stuff, yeah. They won't get anything. I've, I've put everything in places where they wouldn't think of looking. Put jewellery and stuff. So you're thinking that they're. Where have you put the jewellery? That's what I'm not saying. Go on. So no, no, you're no, thinking no. that they're going to thieve from you as well? Okay, so if you're listening, don't think about the obvious places when you're looking for the jewellery. No. But I, I do things like, I would do things like, you know, uh, just pop a little bit of urine, um, maybe in the salt cellar or something. Yeah. Just do something. I'll tell you what I do is I take the, take the toothbrushes in the bathroom, just pop them in the toilet, flush yeah. it, and then yeah. take them back again, just pop them back in there. Leave them nothing, leave, leave them out. When they were coming last week, I brought the biscuits to work. <laughs> Suzanne was like, no, you didn't really? no mates. You no, brought I your brought biscuits to work. No, 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 you weren't a tin, it was just a, a packet of good quality cookies. <laughs> Oh God! But oh. That's what Suzanne always says. Don't know, you know, why why you like this? Because yeah. you know, it's not as if you've been sort of harmed as a kid or anything. Mm. But I like the fact that you just once said to us that you don't need friends. You don't like friends because they're a bit of a pain. Because they call you up and they want to be with you. Yeah, but, but mates are a hassle. I woke up today, right? <laughs> and uh, I think it was on, might have been on Five Live or something this morning in the bedroom, right? And uh, they were talking about how oh, it's Nelson Mandela's birthday. Yeah. Eighty odd. Eight Twenty thousand people turning up at his party. I thought, I'm <laughs> glad I'm not in. <laughs> I couldn't be dealing with that. Twenty thousand people. Think of the carpet afterwards. I mean, a good percentage of them were putting out fag butts on his carpet. Yeah. After Definitely. Tommy Walsh and, and Charlie Dimmer, what's her name? Did lovely, the lovely patio and a water feature. It's gonna, he's gonna come back and he's gonna go, oh, it's ruined. And what's he doing for his birthday? Karaoke? <laughs> <laughs> Chinese meal, bit <big> karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder what Nelson Mandela's birthday party is like. Big cake. Bit an enormous cake. Yeah. Some well, the the spice girls jumping out. Yeah, the spice girls in it. Well, well, everyone. I don't know. Yeah. We are the only three people that hasn't met him. Yeah. I thought everyone the file would have been in the cake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just in case you never know. And uh, if Winnie calls, I'm not here. <laughs> have you not invited her? No, of course I. No, definitely not. Poor Nelson. Happy birthday. How old yeah. is he? 85. Oh, well done. <laughs> no, God bless him. God bless him. Oh. 85 today. Oh. Right, bit of, uh, songs of phrase next then, yeah? Do you reckon? Oh, well, really? What's that one? Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Right. Everybody says that they're looking for a shelter. Silence is easy by Star Sailor on XFM 104.9. So it just suddenly struck me something. I don't know if I mentioned it before. You mentioned um, that you you tried to catch your uh, your guy out when you came back once. You, you opened yeah. the door really quickly yeah. to see what he was up to. Did yeah. I ever tell you when I was at university? Now I'm very tall. I've got enormous feet, size fourteen, 14. size fourteen shoes. And when I was at university, uh, everyone it seemed to me was wearing Dr. Martens. It was like you, you had to wear a pair of Dr. Martens. It was kind of the rule. Dr. Martens was too big for you. Yeah. So that's a big pair of Dr. Martens. That's like. That's where the myth of the old woman who lived in a shoe. I, think, I know from, people with my size shoes. Anyway, I um. 
I just literally kind of moved to university. I'd been there for like literally a couple of months. And obviously in that first period you're quite keen to kind of, you know, reinvent yourself, be, you know, strike yourself, you know, try and give an impression of perhaps being quite sophisticated, worldly, cool, all those things that, you know, you've, you've left behind all your childhood friends so you're trying to, you know, develop something. He didn't new bother, he didn't. What, sorry? He didn't bother. No, 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 I was working hard on it and I was kind of, you know, I was doing all right, you know, and I, I had the tie-dye shirt. <laughs> you know, I was looking good. And, um, so I was trying, you know, working hard to try and seem kind of cool and uh, not freakish. And um, I came back from uh, from studies once, and I came in, and there's a little old cleaning lady that kind of would always come in every day and clean up our halls of residence. And I came back, and my uh, door of my my room was open, and there was like a little huddle of people just peering in, right? And I went, well, I thought this is odd, you know, that that my door's open and, there's, and I'm not in there, and there's people staring in the door. And I looked in. And the little cleaning lady had my Dr. Martens on and was clomping around. Making them all laugh. Doing, making them all laugh, doing an impression of me. That's amazing. And imagine that's, that. Imagine, imagine the, the psychological first... scars that that has. I don't know that she's more popular than you. Yeah, exactly. And they go, and they go come on, Maud, let's go to the JCR. <laughs> exactly. And they carry yeah. her down. They go, drink, 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 <laughs> drink, drink. And, you, and she goes to you, Steve, you better have that spotless by the time I come back. <laughs> You go, all right, I will, all right. But what I like is the fact that I'm sure that that's part, that's not part of the cleaner's code. The cleaner's code is they don't have the keys to everyone's room so you can go through their belongings and, and play practical jokes. I mean, surely uh, it's a kind of, I mean, there's a trust. In she she must it. have looked like a wall bracket with her, with her, <laughs> I went bowling with him once the first time and he, and we went bowling at this place. Where was it? I mean, Finsbury Park. Mm. And, uh, I'd never been before and he's, he's got to wear special shoes. I went, all right, he went, um, uh, so and so and so. He goes, have you got size 14? And she went, yeah, I've got one pair. And she put them on the table and they look like crusty. <laughs> honestly, they're, they're, honestly, it looked like, felt, it was, I just started laughing. Cause they look, they're so long and thin anyway. And they're multicolored, aren't they? They're t two colors. And it looked like crusty's, it's crusty the clown's mm. feet. And then, the, and this dude just went, all right, all right. <laughs> 14, that is big, isn't it? It is a huge size shoe. You're right, yeah. And it was just the one cleaner in them. <laughs> just the one family. She did have loads of kids eventually and brought them up in yeah. there. <laughs> in there. Well, yeah. we've got Songs of Phrase, right, we? Songs of Phrase, then. Um, okay, let's uh, just have a look at the prizes. Let's just remind us again what exactly Songs of Phrase is, because I know a lot of people that put it out of their mind week by week. It's a phrase that's, you know, been said on the show a few times that <laughs> night. Oh, um, but you remember classics, like, uh, what was, what was, what was- We've had hairy Chinese kid. Yeah, there's, there's this hairy Chinese kid. Stop squeezing me, Ed. Stop uh, squeezing me. Carl, you're an idiot. Carl, you're an idiot. Yeah. Uh, you know, some cl cl classic phrases. Classic phrases. And so you use various old time songs and you put them all together and that spells out the phrase. Uh, before we, uh, we, we play that, let me tell you now, you can win. <laughs> Look forward to this. What's this? The new album from the Star Spangles. That's called Bazooka. Is that out, is it? Never heard of When's it? When's Bazooka out? <laughs> never, never heard of it. Never heard of it. <laughs> uh, the best summer holiday album in the world ever. We've got th the treats on there include the Fast Food Rockers and oh. uh, Laz Ketchup. Yeah. I'm um, waiting for their second single, because I, I don't know what that's going to be about. Sure. <laughs> uh, uh, is it going to be a bit more fast food? Maybe like pret a -Manger? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Uh, this is very good. Yeah, two discs out, the best of David Bowie. Um, In Spiral Carpet's the best of them. Still don't know how they spin that over, over three seasons. <laughs> no idea. Um. <laughs> Bowie's is one. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, we mentioned it last week, the American Song Poem Anthology. That's kind of a kooky collection of, uh, of songs. And, uh, we've also got a couple of DVDs here. Stephen King's Rose Red. I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to video. <laughs> yeah, made for television. Yeah, yeah. And we'll never be seen at the cinema. And I know, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of nerdlingers <laughs> listening, so they will be loving Richard Dean Anderson in Stargate SG-1. Yeah. Uh, free inside, there's a collector's card, plus you can win some exclusive memorabilia. Yeah. So I think a pair of, uh, there Right, all you've got to do is listen to these, like, 13 songs, <laughs> probably, to write a well-known stupid phrase. It's only seven, seven different songs, right? Well, just get the most you can, just get be rough, artist or song, it do, it do, right? And the and phrase is, um, about me dad nicking from, uh, telephone boxes. Right? You've got to give them a clue, because they've got to get, they've got to know what they're listening for. It's, it's hard enough when you know. Daddy's never gonna stop robbing from telephone box. Is that it? Yeah. Right. So what are these, what are these songs then? Uh, go uh, on in. It doesn't matter that some people don't know what that's about, do they? Doesn't matter. No, they're not, they're not, well, they're well, the you found as a thief. <laughs> email right. only, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Let's hear it. Alright. Daddy, 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 from Alright. 
also not um, grammatically correct. <laughs> no. But, so it's Daddy, Daddy never gonna stop Robin from telephone box. <laughs> Rubbish. Unbelievable. Play it again. We, oh. I think we just need the song. That's all we're after. We yeah. Just the songs. Right. From. Just again. Well, this is a well, desperate feature. It isn't really it? is awful. <laughs> from. See, Rick, if we took more of an interest in this show, we'd have come in, listened to that, we'd and said, said no way. We'd have said no way. I don't care how long you spent on it. We've got a reputation. Yeah, we've won awards. We've won major awards. We're not putting that tat out. But, yeah, no. You know, we, that's what that's what. But um, we're just giving the listener what they're used to. <laughs> exactly. So uh, I think more fool them for listening. Ricky at XFM dot co dot UK. your breakdown. Um, you went off to Hastings with your uh, girlfriend, stroke carer, <laughs> Suzanne. Um, now what does she, because whenever we meet Suzanne, we bumped into Suzanne recently at the BBC, Ricky and I, she's always very nice to us, very polite, we have a nice little chat, but I'm always wondering what is it that she thinks of us really, you know, because I'm assuming you immediately go home and whinge. Say about they tortured me, you saw they tortured me on air. Now what does she, what does she make of us? Did uh, she listen to the show last week? Yeah, she did, yeah, she knew, she knew I was annoyed. Right. So, she thought it gave me a look like, you yeah. know what I mean, like that, when I, because we went to Hastings. That wasn't because you had like Marmite or something over your face. No, no, it was that. So yeah. we didn't talk for a bit, I just was like, you know, getting over it, sure. thinking I'm sick of this, Yeah. right? Uh, you know, is the, is the new kitchen really worth it and all that? <laughs> I phoned him up and left a message after the show, I said, you seemed a bit quiet when you left, I just want to make sure it wasn't anything I said. <laughs> 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 oh. But no, no one. No you still one... doing your uh, your Samaritan? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, it, and uh, did it did it ring or did you just l ignore it? Let it go to the answer machine. I think I turned it off. <laughs> I left it off. Didn't I yeah. just left it off all day. And but that. what did she make of us? Does she genuinely think? Does she not really like us? I think it's weird because there's no one who uh, who she doesn't really like, which annoys me because well, she says to me, well, she says to me, I'm I'm the opposite. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, everybody annoys you. Yeah. And it's like, well. But that's that's my choice, right? Sure. And that's why I don't bother getting mates and that. Sure. It's just hassle. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. But the problem is sometimes me being like that affects stuff that she wants to do. So you know, if a mate like see her family and friends. Well, yeah. let, let's not say her family or friends, but say if one of her mates had a baby. <laughs> right. 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 I mean, you know, it, naming no names. So no. this happened. Well, I've just got a. You've got Watch what I'm doing, aren't I now? It's the old the builder who knows you're slagging him so, off and saying so indie stuff. Yeah. So you know she's got a few mates who have had kids recently. Right. Yeah. So right. Oh, so one of them had a kid. Yeah. Go on. Right. And uh, she wanted to go and see it. Right. And she said you can come with us. And I was like, you know, you know what I feel about babies. Sure. You've seen one. You've seen them all. Yeah. So they all uh, look like mouse Smith. Why do I need to see another one? Yeah. Right. And she's like, yeah, but come and see it. You know, you get on with them. Mm. Come see him, and I was like, it's, mm, it's a long way away. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. probably narrowed it down again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? um, so, and and that that annoys her because I, I can't be bothered. You know what what I mean? did Quite you say? You say, oh, no, I'm not coming to see him. I don't don't I'm not, like I'm not him. going all the way to uh, to Swindon. What is it? What is he? What is he? <laughs> <laughs> did he? Yeah, uh, yeah. Or Birmingham, or uh, or Cornwall. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, 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 you you know who you are. If you had a baby. Yeah, sort but, of in the last time, and Carl didn't, show, didn't show up. And Suzanne said, what did, what Suzanne, what, what the excuse did she say? You're working or busy or? No, well, to be fair, I was yeah. working, right? And yeah. they are nice people and stuff. Oh, now you're backtracking, cause no, now, just do saying, they yeah. listen? Yeah, do, they, the do they listen to the show? They might, they might do. So you know they listen to the show, so once again, you've got an anecdote where the people who you've admitted to not liking to see their baby or no, care about no, no, them no, no, are no. listening to the show. No. Maybe it's, I don't know, maybe the builder's listening they're once like, again. Nice people, I like them. Just, 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 like, their just, just sneeze in the chilli pot. When the kid's older, I'll go and see him. Sure. Yeah. Just, do you know what I mean? When it's got its own little character. As a baby, it could be any baby. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's got nothing yeah. to offer me. I know what you mean, I know what you mean. It could be what, a toy baby. Well, you know what I mean? It mean, could be a bag of sugar. No, I know what, I know what you mean, yeah. yeah. When it can start talking and, you know. <laughs> and lend you money. Yeah. <laughs> it's got, yeah. got good toys and stuff. It's well worth yeah. going, but at the yeah. moment. Yeah, nothing. I'll see, I'll see it when it's fast. He goes, oh, he's my new book. Yeah, brilliant. Put it to bed. Let's have a game of Scrabble. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, yeah, that's, you know, that's what we were talking about on that, on our way to Hastings last week. For me, you know, that's where I went to chill after the- course after the And that's day. where you decided yeah. you couldn't give 100% to the public if you weren't having a good day, like me and Steve do. Come rain or shine on a tin pot radio station that really doesn't, you know, keep, keep me in, um, frappuccinos these <laughs> days. Um, <laughs> Well, but we'll say, we'll say once again on air, this is official, and this is not to put pressure on you, that, um, me and Steve are going away for a couple of months on the 16th of August to, uh, do the, uh, office special, and if Carl doesn't come back, nor will we, because I see it as a three-way thing, and that's the truth. Rick, you said that a couple of times now, as though you're expecting a flood of emails and calls. Nothing. No, I'm just trying to get in pressure There's because nothing. Cause I know for a fact that they obviously they want us to, to come back, and yeah. I know. I think maybe <laughs> not the listeners though. No, the listeners don't care. They don't care. Just couldn't give it, they don't yeah. care who stands in. Do you know what I mean? Incidentally, what frequency is magic? It's uh, one o five point four. Worth checking out because I yeah. have a great heart is one o six point two. I think oh, uh, virgins. No, well, virgins uh, one o five point. Uh, a good what is that? 105.8. Yeah. Which is, well, which is good. Well, check press for details, but uh, yeah. we're watching cable TV, there's some good stuff on. Yeah, Kisses 100, that's easy to remember. <laughs> um, there's a new Ride album out, gentlemen, I think you're probably quite excited. It's, um, London's Heart 106.2. Um, it's released on the 4th of August and it's all the BBC <laughs> sessions, all the stuff that Ride did, um, over the years. For Virgin. Months. 105.8 for BBC, and um, this is one of them. It's called Time of a Time. I think it was from the album Going Blank Again. It's very good. Play it, Carl. <laughs> play that for Pippa, who requested some ride. That's from a new compilation called Waves, and it's the uh, BBC recordings that uh, Ride made during the 90s, and I think that was originally recorded for uh, BBC Radio 1. That's a good station. A Radio bloody 1. good station. That's a good station if they're interested. Radio 1. It's not one of the... I think they pay quite well as well. Well, I enjoyed working for them. I know we used to work for them for a period of time. Until we? we got fired yeah. for slagging off. Simon Mayo. I think it was Simon Mayo. Yeah. Do you remember that? I can't quite remember it. Well, we used to do this thing, uh, Mary and Hobbs at night, and, um, uh, we st we were, we were getting a bit busy, and so we were constantly handing in shoddier and shoddier work. Right, we used to hand it like that and hand it to them. A theme and there. A theme, I know, yeah. And to the point where they kept going, oh, like every other way they go, we couldn't put it out. Why? Well, because it was the most offensive, or it was inaudible, or it was twaddle, or you didn't record it. You know, yeah. there was things like that. Yeah. There. And then the, the, um, I think the, uh, the straw that broke the camel's back was, um, Simon Mayo had just broken the world, Guinness world record for, um, DJing. Uh, and we were going, oh, that's brilliant, yeah, in an air-conditioned studio with loads of scrotes getting cappuccinos for him. That's not work. Our dad used to bin walls, or build walls, you know, that's work, not sitting down. If he wants to break a record for work, and we went off some things like, I, I know, <laughs> <laughs> we go. We know birds who do leather stuff to, to feed their smack addiction. Yeah, that's work. Oh, that's I want. I want to see Mayo on his knees outside McDonald's giving a rent boy a blowjob and all <laughs> yeah. this sort of stuff. I want to see him hanging up in some kind of leather strap in a to Amsterdam torture garden with thirteen blokes jizzing on him, all with beards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But why? Why aren't you still there? <laughs> Uh, oh, oh happy dear. days. I think happy the producer days. at the time said, um, we can't. I said, why not? I said, we're not saying he did it, we're saying we'd like to see him do it. Yeah. Right? And, uh, she went, oh, he's a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> All the more reason. <laughs> well, we were talking, um, earlier about, uh, friend, you say you don't like making new friends, do you? You're kind of repulsed by the idea of, of new friends, because it's too much responsibility. They might phone you up, they might ask you for a favour, mm. they might need a shoulder to cry on, you don't want any of that responsibility, mm. any of that concern. But I'll tell you what's worse than, than making, uh, new friends is when old acquaintances come out of the past. Oh, pop I, up. It really unnerves me. I, cause I'm constantly bumping into people who I just don't recognise. I know. And I, I always, I've got this urge to be polite. I can never just go, I don't know who you are. I've always Nor got can to I. pretend. I, 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 I've looked for clues. When hmm. they say, you still, uh, I don't know, I go, yeah, so I go, right, and what about so-and-so? I go, so, you know, those two people, and it's like a yeah. sort in my brain going, oh, they mu I must know them from so-and-so. Yeah. Well, I went, I, went, I went back to Bristol once, and I remember, um, walking to the bus stop, 
and seeing someone I recognised from school and walking all the way to the next bus stop just so I didn't have to stand there and make conversation because I, I just know. thought I've got nothing. Where's the conversation? I didn't the know you bit. then. If you're mo- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What can we talk about? We've got nothing in common except the fact that we went to the same school. I, I was know. on a train station platform fairly recently and the guy comes in and goes, oh, Steve, how's it going, mate? And I looked at him, stony fat, I had no idea it was. But of course, I, I had to go, good, mate, good, how are you? How are you? And you know, I, I kind of, I had a newspaper and I kept looking at the newspaper thinking, every time I look at this newspaper, it's a, it's a clue for you to just walk <laughs> oh away. God. But he never took the clue. He never took it, so it was kind of, I'd say, oh, yeah, not bad, not bad. I read uh, the paper and he'd go, oh, where are you living at the moment? So I'd tell him and he'd say, yeah. Yeah. and I'd look at the paper again. Oh, do you still know, um... But, oh. but, but that's the way, when you know they are, it's just as bad, because mm. they, they go, oh, we should have a drink sometime, and you want to go, oh, I'll be honest, look, if I don't want to get in touch with you, I have loads of opportunities. <laughs> exactly. I've had every day, from, yeah. from now, right back to the last 15 yeah. years, I could have made contact. I didn't. Exactly. It's easy. <laughs> Take that as yeah. a clue. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, yeah. If you are listening <laughs> to this, and you perhaps know me from school, or <laughs> yeah. university, yeah. you're thinking of getting in touch, yeah. do not bother. Ditto! Ditto. <laughs> I do not need your friends. You've got enough friends. Better ones. Better friends. I've got a number <laughs> of better friends that I prefer. The reason I have not kept in touch is because I don't really like it. You've moved onwards I've and upwards. moved on. I know people now, the likes of which have won major awards. Ricky Gervais, Ricky Gervais, to name but one. He's happy. See, he's sat right here next That's to me That's all now. the friendship a man needs. If you have, if you have won four BAFTAs, yeah. then give me a bell. If yeah. you have not, kindly stay in your little, bit and underneath <laughs> your particular rock. <laughs> Because we're not interested. We have kept you out of our lives for a reason. I did not accidentally uh, oh. lose your number. Oh. When I promised to send you a letter, it did not. It did not get lost in the post. Nothing gets lost in the post. Oh yeah, exactly. Carl, what do you think of that? It's all right. That's <laughs> that, but I'm I'm honest with them though. When oh. I see them, do you know what I mean? I just say I don't know who you are. Can't remember you. <laughs> <laughs> not bothered. <laughs> I'm not bothered. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that is genius! Anyway, better darkness. Oh, well, I've got to play this. Now, be, be warned, this is a rock ballad off the new Darkness album. I, I love the, love the album, and it's a bit cheeky playing this, because th it's got shades of Def Leppard, mm -hmm. right? But there's a lovely balalaika bit in it, and it's quite a nice song. Right, and it's the darkness, and then they can get away with this sort of thing for at least another four months. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Cardigans, you're the storm on XFM 104.9. <laughs> if anyone from Heart or Magic or Radio 1 or Radio 2 is listening, could well be available come October. Yeah. All right. Please get in touch. Yeah. Um, I think that my new TV is too big, Rick. I said that. I know. When you I, it. I was thinking. But I, I, I can't believe it. He talks about this buying it. It's got a bit of cash now, of course. And uh, what is it? Forty-two inches. Mm. 42 inch plasma screen, wouldn't it cost you three grand or something? Oh, don't tell us, that's, that's, that's Wow, it's three ridiculous. Enough, three, and grand. three and a half grand, big spender. Uh, of course it's too big. Well, I can't get far enough back in my room, in my living room for it. You know, you know, it's for, you're meant to be, I think, four times the screen size away from it. Really? To get out of the air. So that's four times 42 inches you're meant to be sitting away from it, which is impossible. Yeah. Uh, well, I, well, I'll have to just get friendly with the neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's it through a hat? <laughs> yeah. if, if that's the case, though, aren't you better off just getting a portable? What? I don't understand that rule. What, what, to get... what are you saying? Well, you're meant to be four times the screen size away from the TV. But that's then what's the, the point of having a big telly if you've got to keep moving further back? Get a portable <laughs> and sit and right sit next to it. <laughs> Is that how they sell it? Is that what they say to you? Well, no, it's a rule, but I see, I do see your point. Why do people go to the cinema then? Did you see films that aren't out yet? <laughs> Fair enough, he's got you there. Tom. I tell you this though, <laughs> I had it delivered and um, I, are you supposed to tip delivery men? Of course you I are. I don't know. You well, well, if I've I, never had anything delivered before. I've never well, no, not, if it, not if it's a courier with an envelope, but if it's a bloke who's struggled up the stairs, I two, the two fat blokes with a fridge, then give him a fiver for a drink. But but the problem was, I didn't realise, and I was thinking to myself, I wonder if I've got to tip him, and the guy was leaving, and my mobile phone went off in my pocket, yeah. and I reached in to get it, he put his hand out thinking it was a tip, I went, oh, it's just my phone. Oh. And I felt terrible after he left, I didn't know, I, what was I going to do, run down the street and offer him a fiver? No. No, of course not. No. I'm not making no. money, I just spent it on my TV. <laughs> yeah, I've got no money, mate. Yeah. I just spent it all on yeah. this. I had to clean out my jar, exactly. everything, the drawers. Yeah, I had to take some, um, yeah, bottles back. 
What, what but you, what? I, the problem was it took me forever to wire it in. I thought, I'm not gonna pay for someone to wire it up, you know. So it took me about three hours to wire it in, and it was huge, and I got it switched on, and the first program that was on when I got it wired in was Bargain Hunt. I'll tell you this, David Dickinson's tan almost took me eyeballs out. <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. It was just, oh, it was like, <laughs> it was like x-rays. It was so the close. Glow. I know, a, a huge plasma screen with this orange thing yeah. coming out, and, and he keeps, and he keeps turning to the camera, <laughs> course, doesn't he? Just grin. to get you. Yeah, he turns away, you get a bit close, and they go, what's he doing? He just turns <laughs> exactly, around, yeah. takes the cornea off. What do you think, Bargain Hunters, Bargain Hunters, Bargain Hunters? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, well, that's why I'd buy a plasma screen to watch, um, to watch Bargain, Bargain Hunt. Hunt. I mean, it's good, because this is the problem, is because you, yeah, what do you I want? I mean, have you watched anything? That's been worth having. The I only mean, thing I've watched really worth watching. Twenty four. Well, on, yeah, twenty four works great, but yeah. also films. Obviously, that's the main reason mm. I bought it because films just look amazing on the. Yeah, DVD on on yeah. the plasma exactly. screen. If you're into films and that. Yeah. It's just that I only, you know, I've just got the got the five channels and flicking about, and I'm I'm not impressed. <laughs> I mean, I can understand why more people listen to radio and stuff. Yeah. Cause, well, not this one, but go on. Well, <laughs> I, when was it? When was uh? The last time I sort of sat down and had time, because I'm always busy doing stuff on that. Sure. Um, Moaning takes up about three hours a day. Mm. When did, when did Wimbledon, uh, finish? A couple of weeks ago. Right. Found myself sat there, right, and I'm not having a go. I know we stopped Cheeky Freak of the Week and all that, right, so Christ. I'm not, I'm not gonna be having a go. Christ. I sat there. I'm scared. No, I'm not having a go, you've always got to remember that. Go I'm on, just, just, just get on with it, get on, on with it, I'll apologise after. I'm just saying, watching Wimbledon, it wasn't, uh, you know, one of the major games, it was, uh, mm. Little fellas in a in a wheelchair having a having a game. Little fellas in a wheelchair. Right. But for me, I mean, you know, great. They're doing a sport and everything. Don't put it on the telly. <laughs> what was up with it? It wasn't. It wasn't like, a rally going on. <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? Do you know oh, normally Christ. like with the with the well, not two endmen, but with some. <laughs> With, with some of the other players and that, they're playing for ages, aren't they? It's like, yeah. oh, who's gonna win this and that? Yeah. None of that. It was just like, hit it, net. <laughs> oh, Christ! Oh, God! <laughs> I don't know what to do! What, 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 and people, people would like, sat there watching it as well, when they've got other games going on in there. That's what I couldn't understand. If you've paid your money oh, to get God. in... Yeah. I mean, like I say, good on them if they... Do you know what I mean? But it would've been... I think it would start I, first in the marathon. I just thought it would've... You know, give him a game of swing ball or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? No, yeah, 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 I understand. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. There's never anything XFM on. XFM in the community. <laughs> Did anyone confirm, actually, I had an email earlier, um... Swing anyone... ball? No, I'm not having a go, though. Tell them. This is what I'm like, aren't I? You're, that, sorry, this is recording you as well. What do you mean I'm not having a go, tell them? Do you, what, you no, think you just said that to me? That you, do you think you haven't got a microphone? You just said to London... Keep wheelchair sport off the telly because they can't get a rally going. You call them little fellas in wheelchairs. What? And I meant to go. What Carl meant was. What? I mean, what? <laughs> they can hear you as well. Yeah, I know. It's just that they might think that I'm, I'm having a go, and I don't want them to. That's why I stopped Cheeky Freak of the Week because some people got the wrong end of the stick. Right. And what have you? So well, it was funny that one was born with deformed legs. They might think you were taking the mech. But anyway, I just was wondering if anyone could confirm. We had an email earlier, I forget who sent it in, but thanks very much indeed for it. They said that the Paralympics began this week, and apparently what, during the opening show, the entertainment was provided by Riverdance. <laughs> now, I don't know, I, I don't know if that, I can neither confirm nor deny that, but it does seem rather tactless. <laughs> Let's play a tune with Ricky Gervais, <laughs> Ricky Don Gervais. Don't put my name to this last link. <laughs> don't put my name to this last link. Ricky.Gervais, xfm.co.uk. Oh, Magic, God. Virgin, if you're listening, we are available probably sooner than we thought. <laughs> Making plans for Nigel? XTC on XFM 104.9. Well, you seem a little bit happier now. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was, it was alright. I'm a bit worried. I bet, like I say, the last thing that we just talked about, I don't want people thinking, you know, we're having a go at anyone, cause that, it does do me adding. Cause I'm the one who always has to deal with it as well when people do. What? You know, we're just talking, having a chat about tennis and stuff. Yeah, the little fellas in the wheelchair as you put it. Yeah, what are you worried well, about? That- Just that they think we're having a go and that, cause sometimes I, I do have to take calls and deal with it, all this stuff, right? You don't see that, you don't see the hassle I have to go through. No, but I, I, I don't um, often say things where I, I'm likely to get a complaint. Yeah, but I'm just saying it wasn't meant to be taken 
Badly, do you know what you I mean? You're allowed just... to say you thought that the quality of tennis, yeah. because they were confined to a wheelchair, was poorer than, say, Sam Press versus Agassi. I, I don't think that's in question. It wasn't as good a game of tennis. That's what all you were saying. Awesome, you weren't yeah. saying they shouldn't play or wreck the, was... wreck the grass. <laughs> right, Matt. Well, stop. No, 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 I'm just saying as well. But just I can well, confirm, incidentally, we've had several emails. I can confirm that Riverdance opened the uh, Paralympics in Dublin recently. So um, I'm sure that was very good. Very entertaining. Well, it? How you then? Yeah. No, I'm sure it was entertaining. They're very good. It was it the thought? Was it Jimmy that thought it was short for Paraplegic Olympics? Really? I've no idea. Yeah, it's parallel. It's parallel Olympics, isn't parallel it? Olympics, it's yeah. Right. But uh, uh, as we pointed out, that would be pretty much yeah blow football. Yeah, yeah. there wouldn't be many sports in the paraplegic Olympics. It stands <laughs> for parallel yeah. Olympics. I'm educating, Carl. Don't let me like that. I'm educating. I'm not saying funny little fellas in I wheelchairs putting on the grass. There. What? I'm always educating. I'm always telling you about stuff that I learn about and that. That you get off and over, and it's no, about a monkey no, who became no, king. No. So no. Have you got monkey news this week? Got a little bit of monkey news coming up. What does he do? Drive to Spain, rob a bank, or get married? No, we're done. We're done all them, aren't we? <laughs> we have done all them. Yeah, it's but you know, no, it's a good one. It's a good one. And in fact, it's a bit related to what we've been talking about. Oh anyway. God, that's that's good. That's okay. Uh, last week after your nervous breakdown, yeah. um, you went to Hastings. Yeah. Can I, I ask why the hell did you go to Hastings? It's so arbitrary. What do you mean? Why go to Hastings? You I lost him on arbitrary. <laughs> Why did you choose that above all other places within- It's amazing, isn't it? You look at his face when you say a word, <laughs> but, but, you know, he doesn't understand and it just goes dead. It's yeah. like when your computer freezes. Yeah, it is like- it is like that, yeah. Is there- is there an equivalent to, uh, control alt delete when On Carl call. just doesn't understand, so we have to press, like, um, knob, bollock, finger up ass. It <laughs> takes him out of his sort of stupor, doesn't it? Now that's three uh, things to press, but you've only got two hands, so- Wow. Yeah, I know. God, what would I do? I I, what so I'd have, hold on, so I could have the thumb, the thumb of my right hand, I'd pop that up, up his arse. I'd have my, probably my index finger of my left hand on his knob. How would I press his, his testicles? testicles? What would I use? I'd have to use some other part. Shall we try it? Yeah, let's go let's around there. Let's test it out. Look, come on. <laughs> what? Sit down. I just think it's time sit you have a little kiss. Sit down. I've already had a little, uh... What happened, Carl? He loves it, he loves it. I'm just going to give you a little kiss. I'm just through the webcam. Right, hurry up then. Alright, on the- on the lips. No, no, on the- oh, come on. on. <laughs> oh! God! <laughs> I love it because he hates it so much. You wouldn't get that radio on. But imagine I could've kissed Chris Moyles. What? I could've kissed Chris Moyles on radio well, one. Well, Milesy. Give Milesy a little kiss for all his good work. Do you enjoy that? Yeah, it's good, yeah. What happened to Chris Moyles' show? Is he not on anymore? On the TV? Yeah. No. Turns out he was too fat and talentless. Um, <laughs> do you want to tell us about Hastings? <laughs> Where did that come from? Eh? <laughs> what? Yeah, <laughs> Hastings. Yeah. It's, uh, it's alright, yeah. Um, <laughs> what's there? Not much. <laughs> it's just one of them Is there places. A beach? Yeah, yeah, it's got, I think that's what's good about it. Nobody knows, right? Because last weekend it was roasting and, and you saw pictures of Brighton mm. and it was heaving. Yeah. Right? Hastings. <laughs> hardly yeah. anyone there. And yeah, it's got a nice, nice little beach. Yeah. Um, sand? Sandy No, beach. pebbles. Well, right. that's alright, isn't it? You don't, well, no. you don't want the sand. Why didn't you want sand? Why you want sand? a little bit, don't it? It's murder bit. building a sand castle. No, no, you just, just sit yeah, You can't walk on pebbles, can you? It's, you know, know. Well, it's all kind of, it's sort of a bit, you know, ah, dodgy it's underfoot. It's alright. The only annoying thing is, right, the, <laughs> it's one of them places that it's great to visit for a day. Yeah. But I wonder how people who live there get by. Right. Why? Because all, all the shops are like them things that you go in and it's like a little pebble with a a pebble stuck on the top and it says Hastings on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Every shop does that. If you want bread and milk, you, You're done it's, for. it's murder. Yeah. There, there must be a supermarket. I didn't see any. Seriously, it's all novelty things like that. Yeah, and then when yeah. I got back into London- <laughs> Their houses. Yeah, yeah. Just covered in pebbles and like seashells yeah. and stuff. Oh, not rock for tea again. <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, right, it's, it's the first time I sort of noticed somewhere like that when you go, what do you do if you, you know, you just want some Brillo pads or whatever. I wa I'm walking in London- Never concern me that. <laughs> Never needed Brillo pads in my life. No, but you know what I mean, the sort of things that- Yeah. It's a bit tricky to find, but in London, you know, you've got the coverage. Yeah. Now, the weird thing is, I was walking home from- we went, had a drink the other night, right? Yeah. Walking down the road, and there was a shop that just sold, in London, 
just sold chess pieces. Yeah. Is that the one on Great Portland Street? Round the corner from it. Yeah. Yeah. Well that's- I, I think that's well, mental. I remember being in Brighton once and seeing a shop and all it sold was fo the foam you put inside cushions. Yeah, there's one of those at Pentonville Road. But I don't know who opens the shop. I, like know, that. I know where these I things are. There's a hole in the market. Yeah. What was that shop we walked past yesterday? And it was like some really, really- Oh, um, uh, chef uniform shop. <laughs> yeah. It's Dundee Street. Yeah. And I, t I tell you what, I opened the chef uniform, ma mainly sort of check trousers and white hats. <laughs> but there must be a lot of chefs around. <laughs> I'm eating all the time. Someone's making the food. Yeah. The, the funny thing is, on the chef shop, right, they mustn't yeah. have been doing that well. And someone must have, you know, the businesses must have, the bosses must have been sat there going, not really working this, is it? Yeah, right? people only buy one chess set yeah. in their life. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah, but the funny thing is, on the door it's just said, come in and browse. <laughs> Which I thought was odd. Did right? you? No, it's shut. Right? <laughs> but, the, but the funny thing is, the funny thing is, right, so you can imagine them sat there going, oh, not doing that well. And it's changed, they've actually changed the name of the shop now. Yeah. And now it says, chess, chess and bridge. Right, they've had to explain. So they've opened it up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But still. What do you buy for bridge, if not- I don't know. Cards? The I don't know. I don't know, I don't play bridge, but I don't know, I don't think you need a lot of stuff for bridge, except a pack of cards. I remember going- uh, A table. When I was on- Three friends. On Go holiday on. once in Devon, past a shop. I don't know, if you ever need it, if you ever need an antique marionette, <laughs> 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 let me know, I know where there's a shop. Okay, okay yeah. Antique marionettes! I know. Again, you only need one, and this one of those who goes into this business. Well, son, what are you doing? Going to university to do law, father. Well, there's a factory there that makes the little plastic bits that goes on the end of chair legs. Do you want to take <laughs> yeah, it over from yeah. me? We're not really, no. It's all set up. Yeah. It's all set up. Oh, God. All right, Dad, but just for a couple of years. Uh, Someone's got to make them. Someone's I know. Make the little plastic bits that go on the end of chairs. Well, if you uh, make them, call us on the one two three four nine seven three four. Weird though, isn't it? Weird. Weird um, though, isn't it? Right. Listen. Uh, songs of phrase answers next. We'll go. Uh, well, I say what. Play it once more so that people have got a chance to actually enter. Hang on. Keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. Oh, I can't. Be Should talking. be ready, Carl. This All is right. terrible. Here we go. From. Right. That is the well-known phrase, Dad is never gonna stop robbing telephone box. <laughs> the well-known <laughs> phrase. And uh, we're looking for, uh, the songs, I think. Huh? I don't care. Well, uh, tell me where it all went wrong. Tell me where it all went wrong. on XFM 104.9, <laughs> I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Over there is Carl Cayman Pilkers. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be great for heart. You really would. Wouldn't I? You really Virgin, would. Virgin, I'd probably be. But it was Radio 2 would be my first. Oh, all one. Late night station. one would be good. All good stations. All professional stations. Yeah. Four, weeks to, Four weeks to go. Four weeks to go. Before we may give up or we may come back. <laughs> Who knows? It's all up to Carl. Cayman Pilkoids. <laughs> <laughs> Can I uh, just extend an apology? Uh, I was a little bit crass earlier and I made some unsavoury remarks about. Radio 1 DJ Chris Moyles. I'd like to apologise. Funny man, funny man Chris Moyles. I'd like to apologise for that, but uh, it gave me an idea. You the listeners, who do you hate? <laughs> um, email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. I just think that we've never really used uh, XFM as a kind of, well as a research tool, really, and it seems to me that we got we can get great opportunities. And it's here. this, we, we don't sort of do this thing, we don't go on there and sort of like slag off other people and, and people in the public eye. Well, we, we sort of, we pick on targets that are, that, that, that are, can't you, fight back. Helpless, the elderly, you know, people <laughs> suffering in some way that really, really, and particularly we don't want to pick on people like Chris Moles who's got a big platform, much exactly. bigger platform. We want people who can't answer back. Yeah, we want, we, yeah, so um, who do you us, hate? That's us, who do you hate? And we don't want, I don't want people you went to school with or your Do boss. you know what I hate, Steve? Who do you hate, Rick? Right, my top three, just in your top three, would be Hitler, yeah. Mussolini and General Pinochet. Really? No, probably Moylesy, Harry Potter and Jamie Oliver. Nice. But what are your top three? No, don't make them comical, don't make them- these are the people that wind you up. When you see them on TV, if you hear them on the radio, if you see them in a magazine, they just- oh, they make your kind of blood boil. Might be us. It could be us. Well, I mean, uh, I'm know, expecting we, that. We know that we- yeah, yeah, we're yeah. not stupid. We could take it as red that it's us. Yeah. And then it's it anyone might, yeah, other Let's than us. assume it's us, so we want other people. Yeah. yeah. But we just want- I want to draw up the, the top- the top five people. I don't want to hear things like Tony Blair and Jeffrey Archer and fascism. No. Just people who make your flesh crawl for no, for no fault of their own. 
Well, well, really, well, sometimes they're own because yeah, they're, they're you know, yeah. talentless or fat. But that'd be good. But, that'd be a good long, long-term poll. When over the next four weeks, and then, then in four weeks' time, we go, we go. Well, we're off. We're in the top ten. <laughs> exactly. But here are the other nine. So I, I think it's just genuinely going to be quite, uh, quite interesting. So Ricky Dodgerbase at XFM dot co dot uk. Maybe who you hating? Why? It's like g giving a reason in the diary room. Yeah, that you, got, you can't just nominate someone. You've got to say and why. Sure, but if you, you can't know. be bothered to write and why, just nominate. Yeah. Because that means just we've got a lot of reading to do if they start doing that, Rick. Yeah. Keep it down to one sentence. Yeah. You know, so, so, so the reason to be, you know, so and so because they can't walk. Something like that. Sure. Maybe. Now then, uh, we were playing earlier Songs of Phrase. Um, we have had, I mean, the, the, a the, the answers I could literally count on the fingers of one hand. <laughs> <laughs> um, now the right answers, even less so. But, um, do you want to play it once more, Carl? Oh, God. <laughs> From there was uh, <clears throat> seven songs in there. Right. Read them out. Go on. What are they? It was a. Uh, oh, have you got it written down? No, I can remember them. Daddy Cool. Right. Bonnie M. Bonnie M. Yeah. Uh, never gonna. Give you from up. Rick, Rick Astley. Astley. Yeah. Uh, never gonna. Um. Write them down. Stop. Sam Brown. Right. Robin was, uh, Miss Robinson by Simon and Garfunkel. Mrs. Robinson. Yeah. Uh, hang on a minute. That's not Robin. Oh. From, From Russia with Love, Matt Monroe. Right. Telephone. Telephone hanging on the telephone, Blondie. Yeah. And then Box. Living in a box. By <laughs> living in, <laughs> in a box. Well, listen, no, Brilliant. I don't think anyone got them all right. No. If you did get them all right, I'm sorry, but I gave up checking the emails a long, long time ago. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna give you- <laughs> I'm gonna give it to Michelle Flower because she got a few of them right. <laughs> <laughs> so well, well done, she Michelle. got a lot right. Though. That's yeah. really well done. Good, well, well done. done. She got five out of seven. So well done, Michelle. And uh, you get all those great prizes. Incidentally, um, we mentioned that uh, Stargate SG One. I yeah. do look forward to that, Michelle. That yeah. features uh, Richard Dean Anderson. Had a lot of emails. People saying, "Is that the same Richard Dean Anderson or Dickie Anders?" That used to email in and said he loved the show. What's happened to Dickie Anderson? No, I've not heard from Dickie for ages. So, Dickie, if you're listening, Richard Anderson, if anyone knows Richard Anderson, what's happened to him? Well, I think we know he's top three. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, D uh, Dickie Anders, if you're in, if you're still out there, get in touch with Dickie Anders. Anders. It was also, oi. Yeah. Hey. Anders. I just was going to say, you know, you're talking about people who annoy you and that. Yeah. I, not many sort of celebrities annoy me because I think, well, some people like them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Things that affect me, like the builders. Right? You're a builders, philosopher. Go on. The builders annoy me, right? Sure. Yeah. And you could say that's a bit of stereotyping, but all the people who have met who have been builders have always annoyed me, right? So that's- I'd That's because they've been working on your house in your space. I mean, that's not- that's like all the builders that have been round your flat and making a noise when you're trying to get some sleep have annoyed you. Hmm. Well that- Brilliant. But also someone in the office in the week, right, who works here. Yeah. He's a good lad, named Lenny. Right, it's yeah. called Lenny. Uh, he proposed to his missus yeah. using XFM. So like, he popped it? in, he popped in Zoe's show. Right, his girlfriend sat out there. She didn't know what was going on. She was after coming. Even right. she wasn't listening. She was out there. <laughs> she, she, she probably had a walkman on or something. <laughs> yeah. But just, just that. <laughs> she just to Jono. <laughs> <laughs> he had yeah. to fax Jono with the request. <laughs> <laughs> Dear John, yeah. I'm broadcasting you Mexico are. at the moment. Can oh my you girlfriend's my... listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, London's hot one, a six by two. Great stuff. But it's, it's just that thing of like abusing your position. I think it annoys mm -hmm. me. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Because if he, I just was thinking, if he worked for a cab company, would he have done that over? I, I that's what that's one of my hates. I mean? People abuse. Do you know what I hate? Dictators who have just sort of like they've got there by unfair means. Now they're sort of like hurting the like little people and that. Really? And yeah, that's what I <laughs> hate the, the most. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I don't like? What? Famine. <laughs> no, it winds me right up. <laughs> Famine and disease. <laughs> oh, you're so annoyed with it. Tune from Wilco, this is called I'm the Man Who Loves You from their album Yankee Hotel Foxtrot, XFM 104.9. Who do you hate? Ricky Dot Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Alright. Fascists. I didn't want it all. Ain't that brilliant? The Van Dando, all my life. Beautiful. On XFM 104.9. Well, that's nearly it. It's the big one. It's what people tune in for. 
at, they probably tune in about ten to these days, for Monkey News with, uh, Carl Pilkington. Can we hear the jingle? Only four to go. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news! <laughs> <laughs> right, this one's about a, uh, it's been emailed into me. Right. right. I haven't really had time to check it out this week. No, you're joking. Been busy. Ooh, been I busy. hope it's not stupid. Um, goes back to 1908 and the person saying it's, you know, it's a good story and that, and uh, they're surprised they haven't picked up on it yet. Right? <laughs> uh, the Olympics, right? Mm. Um, in 1908 in yeah. London. Yeah. Apparently it was meant to happen in, in Italy, but it was cancelled. Don't know why. Right? And it happened in London. Mm. Anyway. 400 metres, right, it was meant to, uh, <laughs> there was a fella who was, who was gonna do the run, right, and the favourite to win it was this Bulgarian guy, right, it right. was like a new Right, okay, uh, these, these are the few things it cannot be. One, he injures himself so a monkey steps in and wins. Uh, two, he does a drugs test, it turns out that he is a monkey. <laughs> um, so if it's either of those, right, I'm gonna go mad. So anyway, so the fella, right, this, this favourite, everyone's putting the money on him, thinking, yeah, he's gonna do it, gonna Is he hairy? Nice little, Is this it? bloke hairy? So anyway, so the race happens. Yeah. And everybody's lined up, ready to run. And you know, everyone's saying, yeah, he's gonna win, he's gonna win. And suddenly, a bit of murmuring going on, people going, oh, what's going on here? Mm, right? he's eating a banana. <laughs> and there's a fella, there's a fella, <laughs> there's a fella in the lane next to him. Yeah. Right, he's going up. Who's that? He doesn't look familiar. Oh, Christ, Carl. Keep going. Right. Doesn't look familiar. Who's he? Yeah. You know, weird. Know, what's weird, going on? It? What's going on? What's yeah. going on? Yeah. What is it? What is it? Or who is it? I mean, I'm not. What is it? So they go in. <laughs> so they say, "Well, he might not be that any good. Do you know what I mean? He might not be good. He might." It's just a bit short. Anything. Doesn't matter. 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 The fella that no one recognises wins it. People go, what, what, what's going on here? Yeah, sure. Do you yeah. know what I mean? We yeah. had our money on the favourite, what's going on? Who yeah. is this guy? Yeah. Anyway, he stood up there, right? He's, he's looking well happy. Yeah. He's lifting the trophy and everything. Right. right. Long arms, long arms, that trophy's higher than- So God. anyway- He's so only three foot, but the trophy's nine foot in the air with those long <laughs> arms. So, so I'm suspicious, had, go on. They had the, they had the picture in the paper the next day. Sure. And everyone's going, yeah, he's, he was fast and everything, but- Quite hairy for a run. Oh, for f- I'll tell you come what, on, no. come quite, on. quite hairy for a run. Because normally they shave themselves, don't they, to s make them faster and- No. They go, how did he manage it? It's really hairy and that. So anyway, he wins the stuff, he walks away with a cup. The people who are in charge of the running, or like the, uh, the Oli Olympic Committee, look further into it. Turns out it was a chimp. Right, keep talking. Right. No, don't keep talking. Shut, Shut up. Shut up. This is monkey news. If you can't handle the news- It's news from 1909 and I haven't heard about a chimp winning the Olympics. <laughs> right, be quiet. What happened there then? 400 metres, right? Now Don't the thing is- Don't talk shit. The Please, only thing was, Ricky. it took so long for the Olympic Committee, right, to find out that it was a monkey. It was going man- it was like going, like manic. It went into loads of races, it was picking up loads of, like- Don't races. shut up! Right? It became a celebrity, it was doing, <laughs> it was doing endorsements on TV. Don't talk shit! Uh, it said, uh, he managed to win the right. same race four years later in Athens because- How did he get to Athens? But it's, it's a joke! They're winding you up, Carl! Weird. It's not weird! weird it's in- it? right. I do not believe it. Well, that's okay. That's- Sorry. there's only three of them to go then. Right, because we're probably all leaving in four weeks time and that's the end, I am- I've got to get onto a sort of mainstream radio station because I don't think there's any other sort of tin pot place like this, is there? No. Um, so I'm gonna clear up my act a little bit. I've got an album from the, uh, Capital Radio Library, um, and it's the best, um, punk album in the world ever, so if Capital listening I can- I'm just gonna show that I can do a mainstream I'm gonna play a classic song and I'm gonna right, announce okay, it yeah, right yeah, and everything, yeah, yeah, so yeah. uh- If you get a job on- on a decent station, you'll take me with you, will you? We're a pair. Brilliant. So, uh, okay, here we go, right. If anyone's listening, just to show that I can do mainstream radio, okay? okay? Well, that's all- Okay, I'm just- Okay, come on. Shall I- shall I get a mic and do it? It's alright, it's alright. Okay. Well, that's about all there is time for today. You've been listening to Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. Across the way, K-Man Pilkers. Just because on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. We're all here then. Oi oi. About far, five past one. Yeah. Got two hours to go. I imagine you've got all kinds of treats lined up, really. Well, there's lots of things on the show. Great music, you know. 
Nirvana Radiohead, The Darkness, to name but three. Can I play something from Led Zeppelin, maybe? Yeah, please do, and maybe some Neil Young. Oh. Um, now, coming up also on the show, we're continuing a thing we start. We've only got four weeks to go before maybe we either give it all together or go away for a couple of months. Is it three weeks now? Is it three weeks? Oh, sure. I don't know. I think it's the 16th of August, isn't it? It'll end soon enough. <laughs> well, it might be, that, be a shame to end it forever, but it's all up to Carl. So, uh, again, he's in a grumpy mood. He's probably trying up his attitude and it's, it's them, it's the listener that counts, Carl, not us. We may be feeling bad, but you, the listener, count. You come first, yeah? <laughs> okay, up, 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 yeah? Big. Big em up. Big up, London. Big up you, the listener. Carl, leave yourself at home for a little while, yeah? Um, we're gonna continue that thing we started last week. We were doing the list of the most hated people in Britain. And it's not us, it's the listener. So, we're, um, keep coming, uh, yeah. with those suggestions of people you just, uh, obviously, uh, you don't hate them. We don't want a list of mass murderers, dictators, and politicians. You can't have them, but, uh, Ooh, with- um, mass murderers and politicians, what's the difference? Oh, good, good point. Um, good point. Uh, satire. Satire, yeah. No, <laughs> that, that's, we're, we're doing some jokes like that as well, aren't we? <laughs> satire like we're that. We're trying really to get onto Radio 4. Trying to get on there, yeah. And, uh, if there's any kind of amusing show that perhaps takes a sideways look at the week's news and yeah. the new, new people. Uh, if there are any Radio 4 producers who, uh, have been knocking around for about 12 years with the same old hacks and they're desperately trying to get on tally, yeah. they want to give us a call, we're not interested. No. No. We've got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, so if people that you hate, um, minor celebrities, people yeah. on TV, pop stars you don't like, email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. And we're I'll tell you what, then we'll do like the Channel 4 do, then we'll give you the sort of list of the top ten at the end, and you can vote within that top ten. I'll tell you one's out could in front wire, of- Sorry, could we wire up some kind of premium rate phone line so that we make a fortune? We can't it? afford it, but yeah. if when you email in, if you could also maybe- um, send us a lottery ticket, <laughs> yeah. then, you know, we'll make something out of this. The ones in the lead, and I'll never do, do in no particular order, but these are the ones way out in front at the moment, is Chris Moyles, Robbie Williams, Chris Tarrant, Davina McCall. Interesting. I'm sort of surprised at that, but yeah. I know that it's probably just I over think she's just been on TV too much lately. Yeah, that t-shirt annoys me, big mother. Sure. That, that annoys me. Um, we don't care. We don't care whether you're pregnant or not. <laughs> Loads of people <laughs> have children. Yeah. I don't care. Get on with it. Um, and, uh, Dominic Mohan. So, uh, there's the, there, I mean, but, Think of your own. There's a lot of people just coming up behind there, though. Graham Norton. He's yeah, just approaching Graham Norton. from behind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, that's the sort of stuff! It's not a lot. We've done satire, we've done we've done smart. I mean, he's, he's the king of the uh, <laughs> double anyone... entendre. Well, he's the king of the single entendre, but we can double it up if you want. <laughs> if anyone- 104.9, <laughs> this is the sort of things we're available. Go on. If any I'm loving this, this is gonna be good. I'm loving what's coming next, what? If any of the producers of Carry On London are listening <laughs> and they need some new talent to write some smutty innuendo, I think we're your man. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway. Carl, you better press the knob, right, <laughs> to start the record. Spunk. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, I know you're a uh, Neil Young fan. Love him. You probably won't have this album. It has basically not been available for years. It's never been available on CD before. It was part of this kind of trilogy of albums he did that were very depressing, and uh, they've just been re-released. This is absolute dynamite. It's uh, On the Beach. On the Beach? Yeah. And that's the opening track, Walk On, Neil Young. Brilliant. On XFM 104.9, that's the sort of stuff. You've had satire, you've had a little bit of politics. You've had, uh, we said, we said Spunk, which is a bit naughty, isn't it? Which <laughs> exactly. is a bit cutting edge. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And you've had Neil Young and Jane's Addiction, so. I can't think probably of quite anything else. I'd rather. Down with the kids and everything, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, pretty hip, pretty weird. Yeah, so. Oh, do you know what else? <laughs> oh. I wish Tony Blair would just stop. Oh. Doing what? Uh, yeah. Doing stuff wrong. Good, that's good. Who else is there to have a go at? Um. Oh, Peter Mandelson or someone? <laughs> no. No? No, he's good, isn't he? Cause is he's, he's He's good because he's gay, isn't he? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he is. If he's not, then I'm sorry, but if he is, then well done. Brilliant. Good to, uh, all gay people good. Yeah. Um, any underprivileged people, you're all brilliant. But people who are overprivileged, oh. Do you know what I like? Go on. Foreigners. Do you? All the mad shit they get up to. <laughs> oh, why is you it? You see on the news. <laughs> it's yeah. just that interesting, isn't it? Yeah, crazy. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm watching, yeah. I'm going, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing that, boy? It's all weird, isn't it? Killing and that. Yeah. So if you're listening and you're watching good form, stuff, and good stuff, and yeah, well, yeah, Euro Disney, that's good. <laughs> so, so anyway, that's the sort of satire and the way we can yeah. kind of tear apart popular culture and just get yeah. to the very nub bit. Um, well, can I just leave with this? My, do you know my favourite country? Africa. <laughs> it is brilliant. Not it's strictly a country, huge. but it is huge. all the countries, except the bad ones. Remember the bad ones? All evil ones. 
Play yeah. record. Oh, Anyone yeah. Radio 4 is listening. Yeah, we would like to get on some kind of satire show, please. <laughs> Longview and further on XFM 104.9. Richard Gervais, Stephen Richard Carl Pilkington. Yeah, yeah. The Holy Trinity. Yeah, going well at the moment. Not bad, not well. bad. You were just talking about, um, foreigns. Love them. And I'll tell you something, I've been meaning to ask you this for a while, because I know you're a very well-informed man. You're yeah, really political like and sort of liberal and that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How does Chinese work? With the language. I can't figure it out. No one knows. <laughs> I can't figure it no out. No one knows. It's like, it's not like any other language. No, it's not. It's, it's not. You know, either spoken or written down. Well, it's not written down. It's it's. Well, when it's written down, it basically looks like kind of little children's drawings of those little paper houses that Chinese people live in. Well, <laughs> that's <laughs> what it is. Loads of, it is, it's, it's, it's and it's little. loads of them. It's hundreds of them, from what I can make. But I mean, out. even French have a go. It's not uh, even the French um, like right words, but they've got some they're of the right letters, the like and they're going, "Oh, hello, how are you?" And it's sort of they're trying to do the words, but there's just something wrong. I think it's this, this, this is like a speech impediment. I think. Exactly. Yeah. Germans um, are similar. Yeah, Germans are going. Ah, how are you? And they're trying to do the words. They're trying they're to speak English, but it's just Chinese. No it. effort. <laughs> it's just, for want of a better word, it's it sounds to me, when I listen to Chinese, it sounds like gobbledygook. That is a dialect. I yeah, I that's can't. One of, that's the, I think that's the main dialect. That Mandarin and orangutan. <laughs> I can't, but I mean, I uh, uh, that. I can't, but seriously, I mean, I can't figure it out. I just, I, there's, n I've got no grasp of how because it doesn't seem to relate to anything. Wait, I've there's ever not heard. real words because there are sentences. Like you know, we have a word. If we said, um, uh. A gentleman sits by the stream of fish. I've said it often. Yeah. We use all the different words to each one of those words, so we've got a word for each of them. Yeah. yeah. They haven't, they've just got, I think it's like a triangle with a line through it. Right. So, right, which right, can right. get confusing, cause, you yeah. know. Yeah, so the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. That's just, that's what, I think that's like a, I think that's like a little paper house with a feather on top. <laughs> right, right, um, right. But if we, if we got- Personally, this is what I would love to do, I, I want to use the fact that we're on the radio. To answer these questions possibly. Yeah, to tell, tell me about other cultures. I would love to speak to a Chinese person. Yeah. A Chinaman. Well, or a Chinaman woman. A Chinaman woman, I thought it's yeah. fine. But I'd just like to speak to someone, ideally perhaps, you know, a professor of Chinese. Or someone who uh, works in a chip shop, but someone <laughs> who was actually born in Chinaland. <laughs> someone born in Chinaland. Someone born in Chinaland, a Chinaman or a Chinaman woman, just to talk us through exactly what that was go they're going on about. Exactly. <laughs> and it's not, it's just because I'm very ill-informed. I've only really seen, um, Chinese people in kung fu movies, <laughs> you know. So Chinatown. I, Chinatown, walking through Chinatown. Hmm. As we've said before. Not really a town. Not really a town. More of a novelty street. More of a novelty street, a slippery yeah. novelty street. Exactly, yeah. So, uh. Because I remember watching kung fu a lot. They always used to speak, they always, they always speak very slowly, don't they? They do. They're very kind of mysterious. Yeah. Inscrutable. And they, they never really set. They are. They are unscrutable. <laughs> you cannot screw. A you Chinaman. cannot screw a Chinaman or a Chinaman. They are unscrutable. They are non-scrutable. Yeah. If yeah. I was to go out in the street now and try and scrute a Chinaman, <laughs> you'd have no chance. <laughs> not because they you are could not. You could not screw a Chinaman for love and the money. <laughs> they are anti-scrutable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, I could possibly scrute a Chinese woman. <laughs> well, I don't think, you, I don't think you'd have any luck. You've had no. But luck. anyway, if you are a Chinaman or a Chinaman woman who can just tell us basically how it works. How would you teach us the basics of Chinese if you, if we were going to go to China and we wanted to interact? Where would we start? What would be the first word we would say? How would we say them? How would we write them? Please help. <laughs> this is going to run and run. <laughs> What's the number, Carl? 08700 800 1234. See, proper normal. Whole lot of love from Led Zeppelin Classic. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We've not heard much from Carl though, what, this week. We haven't had, uh, heard much from anyone who can speak Chinese for us either, so uh, we're not that one on the head. I don't, think, I don't think we'll be learning Chinese today, Steve. What annoys me is I'm gonna go out into the world still ignorant. I know, yeah. I, I, the only Chinese I learned was uh, from Benny Hill. <laughs> no, Benny Hill could speak fluent Chinese. Uh, well, I, I, the only ones I know is, um, uh, you silly idiot is Siri. Area. <laughs> yes. And bloody foreigners is bloody foreigner. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> I, I mean, that's that's. I, I just it. It, 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 it get you by in Peking, but I mean, <laughs> you, you come in, you hit a dialect, and you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> your worms meet. Sure. Um, sure. Carl. Yeah, we haven't heard a lot about, about from you. We've been going here. Yeah, we've done a few features already. We've uh, oh, yeah, talked yeah, about yeah. Um, different parts of the world, different parts of the globe. Do you speak any languages? 
Uh, no, not really. Well, still struggling with English. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Learn a few words. I mean, literally. So, About yeah. 4,000, I think, now, he's got. I've had a lot of emails, actually. People saying, Kyle, please don't leave. We don't want to see the show ending. Blah, 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 blah. And we've had what a couple exactly of calls is... bringing back, um, Cheeky Freak of the Week. Mm -hmm. And do you know what Kyle said? He said, the bloke was on the phone. He said, oh, bring back Cheeky Freak of the Week. He went, we can't. I don't know. I don't know. You know. And, uh, he went, oh, go on. He went, well, no, I had a story today. A, a fella born with two dicks. But sure. I can't do it. Now, Kyle, you cannot not do a feature about a fella born with two dicks. Well, we'll look if we need it. I mean, how much more have you got on the Chinese? <laughs> <laughs> We're done. We've done that. We've nailed Chinese. We've done it. That's done. That's put to bed. Fella with two dicks, please. No, we, we'll, we might get round to it later. But, like I say, cheeky freak of the week. <laughs> sort of. We've put, put that on, on hold at the moment. Sure, right. right. So, uh, what have we got? What, what, well, what are you what providing then today? Have you got a, a quiz for us? Uh, yeah, we've got, what's her name if you want, we've got, uh... We've got what? Uh, what's her name? Uh... What's her name? No, don't Is that a new one? Don't know. Yeah, what's <laughs> <Is> that, <laughs> yeah, that yeah, that yeah, well, what girl am I thinking yeah. of? Sounds the phrase. Sounds the phrase. We've got, that, we've got oh, that coming up. Yeah, right. Uh... Yeah. Monkey yeah. News, I Monkey guess. News is safe, innit? That's Monkey News, that goes mm -hmm. out. I told a bit of Monkey News, I did a photo shoot with the zoo this, um, week, and, uh, one of the people Trying in charge... Trying to make yourself look good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, they told me that they used to have an orangutan, right? But, uh, it escaped, it worked out, it lifted up the drain, got out the drains and got out up into the zoo. It actually did a what? cold ex escape, what? right? And, uh, Carl goes, what happened? I said, well, they, they sort of like, they surrounded it and sort of got it back anyway. That's no good though. I mean, it's not monkey news unless it steals a car and goes to Spain. <laughs> exactly, yeah, or opens a small I mean, that's trip. real. That actually happened. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's not real unless it, you know, takes a gun, gets a, in a mistaken from a president. And, yeah. uh, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> runs the country for three years. <laughs> there, was some, there was some more news about London Zoo this week about it. Uh, they're all excited because we've got, a, got an ant eater in there. Right. This week. So. Is that good? Is that exciting? No, I think they've had a, an Akapi born. It's got a long nose. It's like a sort of tapir type thing. It's not interested. I've said to you before about if, <laughs> if an animal is named after what it eats, how interesting is it? <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but an anteater is the only one, isn't it? Uh, well, get rid of them. Do you no, know there's, lot, there's lots in there. What other ones are there? Well, there's flycatchers. There's there's lots of animals that are named after what they eat. What's there? a flycatcher? That's a bird, isn't it? Hmm. Seems ill-informed. I can't um, think of many beyond anteater. You're talking about, uh, cause you're talking about the zoo though, and I, watched, I was watching the news last night and it had, um, a feature about Madame Two Swords. Oh, and it yeah. was saying that they, they scrapped many of the royal family. Now, I don't mean this, but I've never understood the appeal of Madame Two Swords. I just genuinely, with no irony, I cannot see the appeal of sort of having my photo taken next to a waxwork of J-Lo. I know. I, d I, d I can't compute why that would be fun. I don't know. What is it? Do they move? Because they don't move, do they? No, they just stand they there. I know. So genuinely, I mean, it's so crowds of people queuing up and people queuing the, up to the, have their photo taken with the rules. And the, I don't. The queue it would put me off immediately. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just down the road, isn't but it? So you go home to your friend and go, there's me, I, I, there's me with Kylie. Yeah, it's not Kylie, is it? Oh, oh no, it's funny. just a wax effigy. Oh, I thought you yeah. met her. No, 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 it's just a wax work. Right. It's not even the real person. It, it, I, if you've been to Adam's Swords, if you have any understanding of why the appeal there, email oh, no, me. Well, no let's, let's not diss them, because they might melt down, um, Ricky Tomlinson one day to do me. <laughs> sure, You yeah. never know, you yeah. know. Uh, or Rick Waller. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't want to put them off. But seriously, I mean, I don't, I'm not You know, Roy a, Kinnear might be in there. What is made... the appeal? Genuinely, what is the appeal? To walk around a number of like But that's the same as lookalikes. When I see it at the back of the stage and it's got like, um, uh, uh, I don't know, Susan Gooding is Caprice. Yeah. And you want to go, what, what do you do with her? Oh, 500 quid, she comes and stands at your party. Yeah. And she'll <laughs> go, she looks a bit like Caprice. Yeah, don't go too close. She yeah. does, yeah. It's like Caprice over there. No, but it's... <laughs> it looks like... Yeah. There was one in the back of the stage which was so-and-so, is Jordan. And it was a woman who was a little buxom girl wearing very little. I BUXOM! Thought... <laughs> <laughs> Are you from the West Country? <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I thought to myself, if you're willing to get your knocks out pretending to be Jordan, <laughs> just get him out and become a page of your model. <laughs> Stop pretending to be Jordan. And call yourself after another Middle Eastern country. Yeah. Don't just... Yeah, yeah don't just... Very odd. I know. God. Very strange. But you've got a lookalike now, haven't you? Yeah. It's but so it's, odd. But it's a bloke, right, um, <laughs> sort of at his desk, right, 
in the picture. And, and, it's, and it's, it's David Brent. Yeah. And it's got Ricky Gervais. Yeah. <laughs> so- I don't remember it's just an old fat bloke with a beard. Alright, don't have a go. Alright. Play a record, Carl. Oh. I'll leave for that. Radiohead. Yeah. And go to sleep on XFM 104.9. Don't go to sleep, we've got some <laughs> more fun and great tunes coming up. <laughs> All right. Uh, just to let you know that uh, we've had a few new entrants on the listeners' hate poll. I noticed Chris Evans is cropping up. Chris Evans has snuck in a couple of times. Um, we've also had Jordan added to the list, along with uh, Mick Hucknell. I think that's because Pete, you reminded I people. I know, I know, I mentioned her and. Yeah. Yeah, consequently. Come on, yeah, she's on think. Thing. Mick Hucknell, and also, this is one I'm, I'm strongly behind, Daniel Beddingfield. If you've yeah, ever heard him interviewed, him. oh, if you've heard him interviewed, he's such a knob. Is he? He really is a bit Don't get involved. We see, the good about this is we don't get involved. You're this is not, true. does not reflect, necessarily reflect our opinions. That's there are a, peop- a couple of people that are cropping up that I'm right behind, but I'm not gonna give that away. So don't, don't give your opinion, Steve, okay. because then we're, then our hands Do are you clean. you know who I love? Oh. Daniel Beddingfield. <laughs> <laughs> he's bloody brilliant. Do you know I think he's a comedy genius? Go on. Chris Miles. But let's <laughs> move on, let's not- So anyway, listen, we'll, uh, we'll be giving the top ten of you, the listeners, votes, uh, probably about two o'clock, and then from that list we if, can- If we remember. If we remember. If Carl that, doesn't lose the list. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, from that list we'll probably try and drop the top three, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so quiz time. I know everyone's been looking forward to this. Which quiz is well, it? Well, we're gonna week? play along, because he's done, uh, Songs of Phrase, where he, uh, cuts up, um, uh, bits and pieces from, uh, uh, records, you have to guess the title or the artist, and, uh, makes a well-known phrase, i.e. a phrase that we've said a lot, and, uh, the challenge is that me and Steve have got to try and work out what it is as well, before we tell, we will tell you the phrase, but let me just see if I can guess, play it. Right, I know what that is. I didn't hear it, can you play it once more right. for me? <laughs> I know what that is. Right, it's why don't they play the game of swing ball? Because that's what he said when he turned on and saw people in wheelchairs playing tennis. <laughs> and his point was... Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. Play the game of swing ball. <laughs> 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 oh dear. That is so naughty. This show's been a bit naughty, I think. I don't know what's happened to us. I think it's, it's like, um, sort of end of term sort of madness. But I yeah. think we've got to calm down here. We've been a bit naughty there. We've we said, you know, bloke with two dicks. We said Chinese people don't talk properly, which is a little bit offensive. Yeah, you know what I mean, Carl? Well, they don't know. Right. Okay. Let's leave it now. Okay. Stop there, Carl. Carl does not necessarily reflect the opinions of XFM or any yeah. other human being. If you think that me and Steve are being offensive, we are strongly behind the guise of irony, satire, and ignorance. Carl only has ignorance. Yeah. And hate. <laughs> yes. No, 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 but as long as you say something good about someone, you can also say something bad about them. Go on, then. How does that work? Go on, then. give us an example. Well, Chinese. Yeah. 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 Great people. Right? Good. That's Weird, the, that's the, the good women, thing. women really good looking as, as, as younger people. No! <laughs> what are you doing? I'm, ju- I'm just saying, as long as you, you know what I mean, there's good and bad and everything. For everyone. Well, what are the old negative. ones like? They, they, they don't age well. Oh! What no, do you mean? <gasps> the fellow in Karate Kid, the teacher, was only about 36. <laughs> we started this! We started this! Oh. oh. Fact. Uh, so, song the <laughs> phrase, email in, <laughs> ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, right? Um, well, I have to say, Carl, it's very tricky this week. You've got some very obscure sounding songs there. Yeah, just all we want is the artist. I right? think just the song, Carl, mate. I no, think that's, that's hard. hard. I no, think no, that's hard. hard. Yeah, the artist. Uh, Just the yeah. artist. I know. Okay, so these are the prizes this week. Well, let's, got... let's play it again so they can hear it. Try okay. and work out all the different artists. Yeah. Why don't they play the game of the swing game of swing ball? Right. Tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why. Play the game of swing ball. <laughs> <laughs> that's tricky. It is tricky. That is tricky. That is good. But there's some great prizes, um, <laughs> including Carl. I can't help but notice. Torn from the 
current- well, I think today's issue of the Daily Mirror- What is giving away a it's, giveaway? It's a free CD from the Daily Mirror, which you can buy it and spend 30p on the Mirror, you can get it anyway. <laughs> but it's still in the piece of plastic. <laughs> I know, yeah. I love it's that. It's ripped. Anyway, there are some other treats for Oh, well. you'll be loving getting that through the, uh, <laughs> the door. <laughs> so there's a, uh, the jingly jangly sound of summer. Good vibes, a two CD set featuring music from Crowded House, R.E.M., Simon and Garfunkel in the Beach Boys. I'll tell you what, I, I've got the thought of another game. We can put Carl's into theory, right? I can, I can tell him a sort of like a, a, a person or, um, you know, a, a people or a place, right? Uh, or a, a profession, and he's got to come up with a good and bad. <laughs> a good and bad thing. This, this is, it's, it is dicing with death. Yeah. Are we ready to do this? Well, listen, if we're quitting in the next couple of weeks, then who cares? Okay. Um, good and bad, right? Well, hang on, whoa, let me just- the, we're on the prizes here. Alright, okay. So now, 55. I know okay. there's a lot of XFM listeners who are gonna be looking forward to the likes of S Club 8 and the Fast Food Rockers. They're all on there. <laughs> I can't wait. What is their second single gonna be about? <laughs> the Smashing Pumpkins. This is quite a good little compilation of, um, sort of B-sides and live performances and stuff like that, which is, uh, which is not bad. The best summer holiday album in the world ever, I think we've given that away in the past, all sorts of stuff on there. Plus the director's cut of True Romance on DVD, the, uh, Tarantino scripted- Oh, it's a great film. Tony Scott That's some directed oh, movie. Oh. So there's some quite good prizes, just play it once more. So, so email in, ricky.gervais, Why don't they okay. play the game of swing ball? Just, just the artist, yeah? That's all we're after. Yeah. Right, anyway, right. Very tricky. Brilliant. Very, very that is tricky. That's brilliant. Alright. Put the uh, song on. I'll put the song on now. What? Let's put a song on. Bit of, uh, Farrell, Farrell Williams. Yes. Good and bad. Good and bad. Um, old people. Darkness. I believe in a thing called love. On XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington. Carl set the ball rolling with, um, Songs of Phrase. Why don't they play Swing Ball? Referring, of course, to, uh, people in, uh, wheelchairs who play tennis. Because he was disappointed they weren't getting around the court quickly enough. So why didn't they play Swing Ball? Yep. Brilliant. <laughs> Someone just emailed in saying because if they hit it to the top, they wouldn't be able to reach it to unravel it. Exactly. Which is a good point. Yeah. But I mean, nonetheless. Good and bad in people in wheelchairs? Do you want to do that? Good and bad. Good and bad things about people in wheelchairs. Um, good and bad. Yeah. Um, I suppose, I don't know really, they, they take up less room in cinemas. They've got their own seat. <laughs> um. Good. That's good, is it? That's, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, well done. Well done. That was bad. Uh, don't know, I'll have to think about it. Okay. But, uh, well, let's leave that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you started it. <laughs> the hate list. Can I just return your minds to the hate list? I said on the hour that we would give you basically the top five. Now, we have to stress, this is the top five most hated people that you, the XFM listeners, have suggested to us. We have not massaged these. No. We have not made these up. These are coming from you. Last week we began it. This week you've continued to email. So this is the list. We do not endorse this list. Some of them we may agree with, some of them maybe not, but it's the list that you have come up with. We are merely the messengers. I tell you, it was coming through recently, Cameron, but he didn't make the top five. I'm afraid he was just a late- Williams entry. dropped out of the top five. Robbie Williams surprisingly dropped out of the top five. Yeah. Uh, so let me tell you now, in no particular order, this is the top five that you're voting for. Listen well, I say XFM listeners, people who listen to this show. I don't- I mean, XFM listeners aren't typical radio listeners, and I think our listeners aren't typical XFM listeners. Right. So, I don't know what this poll- uh, what it's worth. What any <laughs> poll's worth, but I mean, this one is probably worth very little. And in a way, it's sort of worth less. <laughs> yeah, go on, who's the top five in uh, no so particular we, order? We want you, the listener, to then just vote, uh, email in with the one name that you, uh, that you hate the most, and then from this list, out we can, this we can, list, we can yeah. figure out the number one. Okay. But this is in no particular order. Chris Tarrant. Yeah. Surprising entrant. Davina McCall. Well, I don't think- I don't think he's that surprising. Well, I think- I mean, I'm, these, not gonna, these... I'm not gonna editorialize. No, no, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm saying I imagine XFM listeners pretty much despise someone like Chris Tarrant. Okay, well anyway, Chris Tarrant's on there. Davina McCall. Yeah. Patrick Kilty. Right. Graham Norton. Right. And Chris Moyles. Now okay. I'm not gonna say anything. Those are the names that you have drawn up. There are lots of others that didn't make the top five. Richard Madeley was on there, Michael Flatley, 
Vorderman, bizarrely. Michael Flatley's a weird one. Very strange. Um, so Jamie Oliver, a lot of votes for him, but he's not made the top five. So those are the top five. Just email him with the number one yeah. that you hate. And we're another, talking about someone another that- Another pointless inane poll. Exactly. And this, then this time we did it. Oh, dear. Moyles, Norton, Kilty, McCall, Tarrant. It's your choice. Who would you Ricky have on who, who would you have in your list, Carl? You're allowed to talk because you, people know your opinions don't matter. So, what? I, hon I honestly don't really hate anyone. That's, that's that nice. I'm, I'm not that fussed, you know what I mean? We're not talking like so much him. about hate, we're talking about someone that- Yeah, we don't mean someone hate. You can't hate any of these no, people. All they've done was- it was pop them up on telly. But I think it's people who- uh, as one, um, uh, listener, um, she put it, she sort of- so I think she had some of those, and she said, you know, I don't hate them. These are the people that if they pop on my telly, I have to turn over. You know I mean, what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's not- you don't hate them, you- you, you yeah, know. Sometimes it's not their fault, it's like Davina, right? I used to quite fancy her. And now, cause she's always on the telly, it's like- ugh, I can't be dealing with her now. Sure. Right. Well, she's still she's still the same presenter. It's yeah. just that I'm I'm bored with it. Sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So I'm not I'm not getting involved in it. Okay. You know okay. What I mean? Don't want to offend anyone. Let me just give the email address. But I mean, uh, let me just give the email address. I just said it. So look, talk over. Okay. It. I'm going to do Carl's top thing. Ro Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. That's also the email address for your answers to this week's songs of phrase. Play it again, Carl. Would you, would? Go on. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. <laughs> we just want the artists, is that right? Yeah, that will do. I've, I've got- I've got two that you- you- you don't like. Not- not, not that you hate them, but that you sort of like, don't agree with them. Um, would Liverpudlians be in your list? Probably. What about, um, gay fellas in toilets looking at you? Um, well I think they've sorted that out, so- <laughs> 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 Oh, One of the prizes this week in Carl's goodie bag features this song. Play it, Carl. The Monkeys. Pleasant oh, Valley Sunday. Oh, God. <laughs> Monkeys, Pleasant Valley Sunday. Brilliant. XFM 104.9, Carl Pilkington. This show is monkey movie. heavy, it isn't is it? Indeed. It is monkey heavy. Carl, if you were president, would you sort of make compulsory to maybe have a little Little monkey. Everyone has a little monkey of their own. Little chimps out and out, old age pensioners. It's not a bad little, uh... It's funny, you know, cos there was, um, <laughs> a story the other day, uh, when I was looking for monkey news. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah. There was a story about a couple who, who couldn't have any kids, right? There's something wrong with them, but they really wanted a kid. And they got some, uh, dodgy email address where they could buy a baby online, oh, right? Yeah. It was someone who would have a kid and you could buy it for three grand or something, right? Yeah. So anyway, they got one, they got picked and like, brilliant, there's the money. Got the baby and everything, they were loving it. Um, you know, playing with it and stuff. As it got older- Feeding it. <laughs> it got airier. <laughs> oh, shut the f- Oh, car! Turned out they'd been sold a chimp. <laughs> You, you maniac, <laughs> you stupid mank twat. How Don't talk shit. That is as if. That, <laughs> uh, uh, what? I oh, don't <laughs> talk. Are you, are you mental? <laughs> you I love the fact stupid. That, that didn't make it into monkey news. I know, yeah. Uh, they, well, that's a bit sad though, we don't like to bring, they bring bought the feature down. <laughs> yeah. But and anyway. how long was this into- it got airier. They're born hairy! No, they're not born like humans then develop hair, cause they go, hold on, we better ch we better get the chimp stuff kicking in now, cause we're in the jungle! School photograph, do I like, hang on a minute. <laughs> it looks a bit weird. Oh, you kids. are just the, mad, the, the rubbish. Mad, innit? it? Mad, innit? it? <laughs> mad, innit? it? Imagine, oh god. But Just anyway. imagine if he was in charge, we did put him in charge of the country. Just, terrifying. Wouldn't that be amazing? Let him- Run the country. Just for a week. Or, or the mayor. What would you do if you were the, uh, the president or the oh, Lord Mayor of London or the Prime, Prime Minister? Oh, Carl. I, I wouldn't know. do it like he's gonna be off with it. It's a hypothetical question, Carl. No, but Su Suzanne was, uh, alright, me, me missus, if you're a new listener. Your keeper, sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, help her. She was, she was watching the news trying to follow some heavy stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, The weather? What? <laughs> I just was like bored and I was reading about that mouse that had an ear on its back and stuff like that. <laughs> So she said, well you take notice of this, should be, you know, you know what Ricky and Steve are like, they, you know, they try to teach you stuff and you don't even want to learn. Mm. <laughs> so to try and get She's me interested one. in it, she was like saying what would you do? 
if you're president and stuff. Yeah. And I, I can't be doing with any of it. That's what did you come up with? You must what have- you, what, what would you- what did you come up with? Did you come up with anything? I had a little, um, the design of it, right? I yeah. said I'd, 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 I'd have like red and blue, <laughs> sort of, do you know what I mean? Both sort of major sides into one. Yeah. Yes. That's well going. that's broken the back of it. That's- that's a pretty good manifesto so far. Uh, um, anything else? What's on the second page? I had like, uh, KP looks after me. <laughs> that would be the badges, would it? Yeah. That's um, good. I'm a KP nut. Yeah. <laughs> um, KP looks after me. Yeah. Brilliant. That's about as far as I went with it. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? What about, you know, policies, transport, um, crime? Uh, uh, you know, just just law and order. Um, yeah. How would you? What would you do? How would you deal with crime? What would your initial approach be? Would you introduce guns? Should police carry guns? Nah. No. Yeah. Um. Would I have to worry about that? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, no, good point. Minister. Good point. No. What um, I'm saying is, though, I mean, Tony Blair isn't sorting everything out, is he? No, but he has a say in most things. Does he? <laughs> <laughs> well, go on. Then what? What are the problems at the moment? I need sorting out. Well, generally, how would you, how would, what's the best way to combat? Would you, uh, would you bolster up the prison system? Would you, uh, introduce more community service? Would, would, you, would you make, would you make, would you go harsher for say, for say, um, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, drugs. Would you go harsher or, or less harsh? There's, there's pros and cons of both, isn't it? Because, of course, you, ca you can't see to condone it, but some people, you know, you don't want to go through the court system and cost taxpayers thousands of pounds of money for someone, I don't know, the difference between smoking a spliff and dealing crack. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You have to all these things, you have, to, have I lost you? Yeah, I'd, I'd just think about it for a bit, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> you think about it for a bit. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Probably ask Suzanne. <laughs> 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 this is amazing. Get her help on it. Yeah. Can now, what about the foreign situation? Would you, uh, would you have supported Bush in his war on, on terrorism? Um, You're aware uh, of this war that we had recently? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. I mean, if I was new, though, couldn't I just say, look, new slate, do you know what I mean? Let's start again. Yeah, right. of course you can. I'm in charge now, let's, you know, let's see if we can sort this out. What would you do then? And see what happens. <laughs> just leave Brilliant. It. Just leave Suck it. it and see. Brilliant. Brilliant. This, uh, yeah, this is excellent. Now so this is uh, this is not really your jurisdiction. This is not really your area. But you, I imagine you'd have some powerful friends. You might on, have a say on, in it. Come on. Yeah. Would you? Uh, what would you do about uh, single sex marriages? Same sex marriages. See, this has got ca this Cameron. I thought Cameron had blown it on Big Brother because they said, um, you know, what, what do you think about um, uh, gay fellas getting married? And he went, oh, no, in the Bible it says, you know, a man and a woman. And I thought, oh, he's put off a lot of, yeah. I don't mean to think many Christians tune into Big Brother, but we know the gays love it. Yeah. They love Big Brother, don't they, the gays? Yeah, so interesting. But, uh, so, uh, what, was know, your, what would your take be on that, same-sex marriages? Um, and then what, having a kid? Well, just let's start off with, you well, know. that's alright, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Just let them get on with it. Sure. It's not affecting anyone else. Sure, yeah. sure. Right? But it starts getting tricky. Right. When you get a kid. Okay. Go on, why? Well, it's, it's just tricky, innit? Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, you could be right. I'm not giving any- I mean, you know, uh, we're not- there's no right or wrong answer. It's alright, if you were in like- if you lived in the jungle, right, with no one else, yeah. right, and you just had these two fellas, right, yeah. looking after you, but because you got no one else looking in on that saying, oh, you're a bit weird, aren't you? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Well, right. as soon as you come so to is it, what, what, where the- so where they got married, do you think the gay people turned to a bloke because they couldn't get a woman? Um, If it, if you live- if, if there's two fellas go away and they're in the jungle, they go, we're definitely not gonna find a woman here, we might as well bum. That's not how homosexuality starts. People don't- It makes don't, you wonder No, no, it doesn't make you wonder. Gays don't go, well, I'll tell you what, I haven't seen a woman I fancy yet, I'll try a bit of knob. <laughs> no, 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 but what I'm saying is, right? If you're brought up in like a little jungle, right? Yeah. Uh, you How are you brought up? Someone just puts you there. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know what. I can't be bothered, Steve. I can't be bothered running the country. I can't be bothered running the country. Like I'm too much trouble for you. KP <laughs> takes care of me. All right, yeah, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, what okay. I'm saying is, right? If you're brought up in a jungle. Yeah. Right. Right. Bro, what own. do you mean brought up? Just let him finish. What does he mean you brought, understand brought up, though? Like Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to tell me what you mean by brought up. Just Wolves! Just... Chimps! What? Right, well there's a good example of what I'm saying to you. Right. Right, what I'm saying is, 
is a fella, right? He's brought up in the jungle. <laughs> Shut up! Just let him finish. Let him finish. There's no women about. He doesn't know about women. He doesn't understand what women are. Right. Right. But another fella walks in, in the scene. Yeah. And he gets pally with him. <laughs> what does he talk about? Then they've both got needs. <laughs> <laughs> this scenario <laughs> is ridiculous. What How has he lived? <laughs> or do you know what's his reference point? I can't be bothered with this. Honestly, Saturday should be, you know, day off and that, not worrying <laughs> me about <laughs> problems. Oh my god! Oh! Oh god! <laughs> KP takes care of me. Oh, dear. Elbow. Fallen Angel on XFM 104.9. So, uh, there we go. Carl is president. He's still, he's still confused, aren't you, Carl? Just a little bit. Just a little bit sort of amazed. Yeah. By the body. Yeah. You're just in awe the, of it, aren't you? Just the way- I'm amazed how two people can buy a baby on the internet for three thousand pounds and not realise it's a chimp till it goes to school. No, 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 but seriously, what we were, you know, talking about there during Elbow and Fallen Angel, <laughs> uh, we were talking about that I think- Yeah. If you're locked up, well not locked up in a room, you've got a normal life except there's no women in it. Yeah. Right. But how would that happen? What would this point of reference be? How would you bring right, up a on person? Hang on, can I just ask you totally, Go on. How can infinite monkeys and a typewriter? Right, okay, and I've told you before, right, that is not- you don't actually have to test that model. It's- it's, um, basically a model for the- th that explains the nature of infinity. Okay? Yeah, but... I've told you before, it- mm. it works because of the definition of infinity. There's no- there's nowhere in the world you'll ever be able to get an infinite amount of monkeys and typewriters to com- But anyway, all I'm saying yeah. is, I think if- if you don't know about women, would you crave for a woman, even well, though you, you don't you, know you, 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 When you hit sort of puberty, your hormones will kick in and you'd- you start getting urges. But for what? If you don't know about it? You don't have to know about it. You don't- when- if you grew up and you started feeling hunger, you wouldn't go and wonder what that is. You'd go, get me a sandwich, I'm starving. It's different though, it's different. But I'm not, um, but, but we're not, not saying it's, uh, it's all hardwired or people are, ch you can't change their, their natural state. We do it all the time, we fight nature all the time with conditioning. That is weird, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, right. well that's that I, one, I'll I was, tick that, was, it's weird, isn't it? No, the body is, there was something, yeah. did, you, did you read that thing the other week about, um... Man with two penises? <laughs> no, 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 we don't need that, we don't need uh, that. Uh, lawyer who got in office realised he was actually an orangutan <laughs> and they just shaved him, put a suit on him, from Hugo Boss, <laughs> and the funny thing is, he won the case and the judge said, well, <laughs> don't send him back to the jungle, let him set off on his own, bodge it, wibble and podge. <laughs> <laughs> You'd make the best judge in the world. No, there was a fella- Here's a banana. There was a fella who, um, was in a coma for twenty years. Hmm. Just, they- they kept, like, taking him to, through, like, the normal day, they'd take him to Alton Towers and stuff. <laughs> Doesn't know any- about anything about it, just kept going through the motions. Um, don't know if they kept charging him. Um, <laughs> kept putting him through all that, he eventually came out of it. And went, stop taking me to Orton Towers, it's shit! <laughs> I, just, I just thought, imagine and how much post making, they eh? How much post? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Did God. you read about that guy in the paper, Carl? He, um, <clears throat> sorry, on the internet. Uh, he, he, in about, I think it was about 1984, 85, he had a terrible car accident. But this must be it. He this went into a coma. This is must be what he's talking about. Well, they didn't take him to Orton Towers. Of course they didn't. But you've got to try and decipher the truth from the conjecture, from the thing that he, he I mean, don't forget, Carl says, uh, realises that he's had a dream. He talks to Suzanne and goes, that was good, wasn't it, last night we were in the plane? She goes, no, that's a dream. He goes, oh yeah, where's my car for <laughs> You've got to, you know what I mean, I can now decipher what he's actually seen, what he's read. Well, go on, what, what, what did you- Well, I'm assuming it's the same guy. <laughs> it is the same guy. In, uh, it was a guy in, uh, some small American town, yeah. and he'd had a car crash, and he'd gone into a coma, and his, uh, wife had, uh, left him, she'd gone on with her life, because he'd been in a coma since then. And he had just woken up recently. Marriage wasn't working. <laughs> Marriage wasn't working. Uh, he just wasn't paying enough attention. <laughs> uh, he actually had, she was pregnant at the time, and so now his daughter, his now, his daughter is basically the same age as he was when he went into the coma. And, um, oh. he's just started coming around, he's just started making jokes. He says, they said, uh, how do you feel? He said, horny, which I thought was quite witty for a man who'd been in a coma for 
however many years. Um, but anyway, yeah, so he's slowly trying to rebuild uh, what life he can. He can. That's what do you make of that, though? Because the thing is that he's missed. Imagine what he's missed, Carl. Imagine the music that he's missed. The Live TV Aid. Programs, missed the Live news. Aid. <laughs> Live Aid. He missed, he missed uh, uh, Phil Collins Spurs. playing in two continents in one day. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which, oh, frankly, I'd be devastated if I just missed that. Missed happened. Bross. Yeah. Yeah, so he doesn't. So he put on ripped jeans and they go passe. They just have to send him a series of those uh, <laughs> I love nineteen eighty six exactly. programs with Kate Thornton filling him in on what he's exactly. doing. Exactly, Peter Kay reminding him of space hoppers. Yeah, he Richard remembers Bell those talking rubbish. Yeah, so, so um, extraordinary though, isn't it, Carl? To think. Mm. No, obviously. So not. Are, are he age much? Because he hadn't had any problems or anything. No worries. Well, well he, he, probably wouldn't, he probably wouldn't have. Physiologically, he probably wouldn't have the wear and tear of a 43-year-old no. man, a because he wouldn't have sun, he wouldn't have had sort of nicotine, beer, um... And the thing, we're just feeding that to him. <laughs> yeah, anyway, to still, him yeah, <laughs> yeah, um... So you feel groggy, though, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you might feel a bit groggy, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he's not, he's not fully back to normal, I mean, there's no, some kind of residual brain damage. Yeah. But nevertheless, he can form sentences, he's got very, he's got no real memory, so he can't remember a lot of things. It was just when I saw Carl, that. Have you been in <laughs> <laughs> so are we uh giving the answers out for what's in there? Oh later, later, play a tune on yeah. board. <laughs> the sneak dog. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sneak Doggy Dog from nineteen ninety three. And what's my name? Long time ago. <laughs> it was indeed. Ten years ago. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Wilkinson. Songs of Phrase. We've had very, very few entries. I really think people aren't interested. They really have just given up. I mean, seriously, Carl, that's the one thing. That's the one thing you contributed to this show, Carl. And it's it's the the weak link. It's I the think missing link. in the chain, the missing link. Oh, do you reckon there is one, Carl? Do you reckon they'll ever find the missing link? Wandering around Manchester. Wait a minute, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> um, the stats then, let's have the answers if we can. Right, it was, uh, well, special. Let's play it once more. Alright. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. Special. Yep. Jermaine Jackson. Play the game of swing. Uh, right, it was, uh, play the game of love. Uh, I think that was Wayne Fontana and the Mindbenders. Right, right. you think, but you're not sure. But Louis Armstrong was the, uh, don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Queen, don't stop me now, we're having a good time and that. We're having a ball. We're having a ball. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, so, considering you yourself weren't entirely clear, I think it's only fair to give it to Paul Brown, who got some of the answers right. PB, um, you are getting those prizes. Well, they are on their way to you now. Way to you. Okay, the stats are in for the XFM listener hate list. Um, some interesting results. Go on then. Reverse order. Okay, in fifth place. In fifth place. Interesting. Davina McCall. Yeah. I think that's just, I think that's, uh, is a reflection of her being on telly all the time and yeah. that running out of stuff and being a bit over the top and, mm. yeah. Fourth position. Yeah. Christopher Tarrant. Okay. Well, that, I mean, that's, yeah, I wouldn't have thought he's the favourite. There is role a model joint of, go on. second place. Go on. Graham Norton. Yeah. He's alongside in second place. Patrick Kilty, which means Chris Moyles is the winner with an overwhelming vote. And I swear to God, I have not done anything to those stats. Yeah. That is exactly as they've come in off well, the email. We do not give our opinions on this. Do that was the SFM that. listeners, but uh well done. <laughs> Thumbs up, you all win a We're prize. We're gonna play you some nice records because of that, aren't we? <laughs> I reckon this sort of prefer some ads. Either is fine. Yeah. Feeder, forget about tomorrow, on XFM 104.9. When I was at um, university, my best mate was a bloke called uh, Wally, and he was doing um, psychology, and I was doing philosophy, and um, we both got into this thing, a uh, theory called determinism, which is about the uh, uh, state of the mind, and it's a, a materialistic view that um, everything is part of the causal web, and everything has a, uh, um, a reaction for something that happened before it, and, uh, um, uh, by the way, Carl, do not confuse this with fatalism. <laughs> Determinism is not predictive. It's just that if a brain state happens again, then uh, anyway, the famous Everyone one is knows. 
Uh, yeah, the famous one is, um, if, you know, a butterfly hadn't shaken its wings, Queen Victoria wouldn't have sneezed, everything's yeah. indiscriminately linked, right? We were thinking that, right? And we are thinking, what if, um, you changed one word in, like, classic songs, or one note in Beethoven's Symphony? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It was how it just wouldn't work. Well, I've always thought that, uh, um, Come on, baby, light my fire. Yes. Not as good. That sounds brilliant. Yeah. Enigmatic, interesting. Not so good. More pedestrian if it was, Come on, baby, light a fire. <laughs> yeah! Just, <laughs> yeah! Just one, just one thing wrong! Yeah. That would be great. Just sitting there. Paul McCartney comes to John and he goes, Alright, John. <laughs> written a song. He goes, Well, she was just seventeen, well, you know what I mean. The way she looked was way beyond compare. I wouldn't dance with another. <laughs> Well, that's, go on. I'll stop you there. What's the matter? Something not quite right with that. I love no. the song. It's great. Yeah. Just once more. Pause. Well, listen, don't be too harsh. I mean, because we write our own songs. No, sure, 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 we can sure, still yeah. put both our John, names to it. I think you're a great talent. I think you're a great well, talent. Well, I'm listen, 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 you hippie, right? <laughs> Well, um, not yet. Well, not yet, but sure. I mean, there's a Japanese bird outside looking no, in. Fancy, I'm not interested. No, no, well, listen, well. And I'll never right? change my view. <laughs> right now, listen, right? I wouldn't dance with another. <laughs> is, that is it that big? You don't like? Is it the. I just is this, like the, could you try and, is there a different well, okay. pitch you could go I with? wouldn't dance with another. <laughs> so again, you don't like the, is I'm it just the noise? I'm not sure the girls are going to go crazy no. for it when we do that Just bit. think, just, just think of, just, is there anything else you've got? I <laughs> love the idea of just changing one <laughs> yeah, yeah. lyric. <laughs> Radiohead. Well, that was their classic song. Really? Creep. You can't really change that, can you? Burke. What if yeah, they call yeah, it Creep? Yeah. I'm a Burke. <laughs> I'm a twat. I'm a knob. But don't worry about determinism, um, Carl. Just Please. Cause we, just because it says we don't have a, a free will as such, you know, it's more an illusion. It's not the, whether, we, whether we choose our choices, whether we can choose, you know, uh, to choose our he choices. He knows all this. But don't, but don't, as I say, do not confuse it with fatalism. It is non-predictive and does not change anything. I mean, the moral upshots are frightening because if we have no free will, then are we culpable for our actions? But again, it changes something because you've got to take people out of society that are harm. Carl you know. has often said that. You all right, Carl? Am I still a president? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on! Yeah. No, no, I'm just, just asking, I'm not- Yeah, what would you do? What would you do about determinism? Change it. I'd have a day off. <laughs> if you were president of America, would you ban guns? It's in the constitution, everyone's allowed to have them. Mm. I don't no. know, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> I just love <laughs> Imagine all your, your different aides and the Secretary of State and generals coming to you and uh, they come out and they go, what did he say? He goes, he said he's going to think about it. Again, did he say that again, did he? Yeah. What was he doing? He was on Alan Over looking at monkey news. <laughs> Apparently, uh, a chimp stole a car and drove to France. <laughs> ah, Brilliant. no, monkey news. You're talking. Mo I'll tell you what, should we have a great song, then monkey news? It'd be an absolute treat. What about a little bit of David Bowie, Sorrow? Uh -huh. Yeah. Didn't write this one, but I mean, he sings it bloody well. <laughs> David Bowie, Sorrow, on XFM 104.9. Nearly there, but you know, we're working our way to the grand finale. The bit where Carl spouts absolute nonsense from a dodgy source on the internet about a monkey who did something impossible. Let's queue up the jingle. Hang on. Alright. Perfect. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news! <laughs> right. Uh let's have a look. This one's from, uh, <sighs> from some woman, right? Yeah. And she's, um, she was taking part in the London to Brighton bike ride. Right. Mm. Lovely day, weather's good and everything. What year? She's, uh, just a couple, a couple of months ago. Um, she's done all the training, right? Done all the training and stuff. Mm. Uh, got a brand new bike for it, got a little puncher outfit and stuff, all set for the day, right? It's a nice day, she sets off, they all start pedalling and that on the way to Brighton, yeah. right? So she's, she knows the route and that, got a little headphones on, cycling along. Uh, suddenly. Right, okay, I'm stopping now. Um, if. Uh, a cyclist overtakes her, <laughs> and it's going really fast, and it's sort of hunched over, but it's got, like, lots of cycling gear on and a helmet and goggles, and they can't tell what it is, but they just know it's a, like a, uh, little hairy, 
um, fella, um, who hasn't bothered shaving his legs, which is weird, isn't it? Because cyclists usually shave their legs, and this bloke had really hairy legs. But, um, and it won. They gave it the medal. It won three years running. They gave it the key to the city. Uh, it had its own game show. And then well, someone said, hold on, though, this fella's all hunched over, and he's only three foot five, and his arms are longer than his body. Uh, it's a chimp! If it goes anywhere near that, we're never doing it again. Mormon can use next week. <laughs> <laughs> she's cycling so along. So anyway, she's cycling along, right? And, uh, this tricycle. <laughs> <laughs> I could predict that! <laughs> There's always oh. one element you can never anticipate. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Got a kiddie's tricycle with a little kid on it. Little hairy kid with a helmet. Okay, just <laughs> go on then. Well, a tricycle comes whizzing, whizzing past. Whizzing past, yeah. Thing. Strong legs, isn't they, James? So, she's thinking that's- but didn't get a chance to see the face. Oh, yeah! Couldn't quite see the cyclist! <laughs> You bold mank git. Go what? on. Yeah, research scientist Carl Pilkington. So, <laughs> so anyway, she gets to the end line, right? Yeah. And um, they got talking, that's it was a nice day, nice race and all that. <laughs> so did you see uh, a little little thing on a tricycle? Thing? Well, there's, there's, well, well a person, surely, just a human. Did you see that no. Did you see that bloke on the bike tricycle? So anyway, oh, turns tricycle. out tricycle. <laughs> yeah. Well, what did you say, thing? Well, no, that's, well, well, that's suspicious. I mean, what did you say, did you see that fellow on a tricycle? <laughs> anyway, so it turns out- Go on. It was a chimp. You're joking! <laughs> right. Well, Christ almighty, there you go. <laughs> Unbelievable, and it was a chimp all along. So anyway, right, so the woman's like, um- We're never doing this again. Checking out the news, right? There's n there's nothing on it, she checks out XFM Monkey News. Right, okay, I'll I stop me there again. Right? If it turns out, she does not the news, right, and the circus goes, we're looking for our chimp, it used to ride the tricycle, and it escaped with police chasing it. No, 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 no. So she listened to XFM, see if I picked up on the story. <laughs> yeah, sure. Didn't, I didn't have it and stuff. Um, so she got in touch with the organisers of the London to Brighton bike ride, said, look, saw a little airy fella. Why did she care? Because she wanted to know, she thought it was a bit odd. Well, turns out it was a chimp, they weren't happy about it. Of course not. Because now the owner of the chimp, Wants to enter it into the Tour de France. <laughs> ah! No! <laughs> oh God! I'm gonna die! Oh God! Oh, in uh, in oh, 2005. <laughs> no, a couple of questions. <laughs> I, I trust you'll be able to answer these. Um, oh God! How, Steve, help me out. How did it get hold of the tricycle? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Okay, no, that's fine. That's, that's, that's not an important know. point. Like that's important. How What's about with you, Steve? He doesn't know that. How did it know <laughs> to? How, well, firstly, how did it know which way to cycle? But more importantly, how did it know there was a major bike ride? On following, the, following the crowd, no, Steve. No, What's the matter with you? The owner of it had trained it and so <laughs> oh, No, he hadn't. It had already done the run before and before the big day. No, it hadn't. Um, uh, like I say, it wants to do the Tour de France in 2005. No, it doesn't. Um, but there's something about animal rights. If if they don't let it enter, you, they can kick up a bit of a fuss. <laughs> Is that it's cruel to make a chimp ride a bicycle? Not, Not if that it's to. prejudiced that it'll go, is it because I is hairy? You idiot! Right. So. Wow, that is the worst, that is the worst <laughs> one yet. Absolute twaddle. Absolute rubbish, Carl. Have you got a tricycle? <laughs> Unbelievable. 